All right. What's up, everyone? Welcome to uh, Aimbot. This is, in fact, uh, the final show I'm going to be doing on Tuesday. Uh, not the final show overall. I'm actually moving to, I'll be moving to Wednesdays uh, every other week right before speedruns from the crypt. Um, so just to get that out of the way early, if you wanted to uh, catch my show switching, uh, catch me then. Uh, I'm actually really excited to be um, partnered with Ignisus because his show and mine kind of overlap a ton. And I'll tend to put, like a lot of horror games are really good FPSs, right? So we, we tend to put on the same things so we can kind of theme it a little bit closer together. But uh, one quick announcement before we get going. Uh, Frame Fatales is Games Done Quick's all-women online speedrunning community. Uh, the upcoming event, Flame Fatales, will run from August 13th to the 20th, and the schedule will be released on July 6th. Go to gamesdonequick.com slash framefatales for more information. All right, so uh, this is one of two... I, I figured I'd go out the same way I started on Tuesdays, right? I started Tuesdays... Uh, showing off Borderlands games. You know, the fir my first show was Borderlands 2. And I figured, let's go out the same way. So this is one of two Borderlands games that I've never actually shown off on this show. Uh, Shockwave is going to be showing us Wonderlands, which is definitely everybody's, uh, everybody in the community's favorite game. So Shock, take it away. <laughs> Here, thanks, Amy. Hi, uh, I'm Shockwave. You might have seen me. Uh, I've run Gunfire at SGDQ. Uh, back with something... Somewhat in also in a vein of like how you started, similar of how I started as well, running Borderlands games. Um, this is Wonderlands. This is the newest entry in the series. It came out just a little over a year ago at this point, and it's a little different than uh, Borderlands 3. It has some other things we've added to it. Um, the run's also slightly different than what you normally do to Borderlands game, you don't pick a class, like, you don't pick a character and that's what you play. You pick a class, like, you create a character and then you actually sort of evolve based on what you choose in the middle of the game, but uh, we got a couple things to do because there's a bunch of things that, like, have to play before I actually get started, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Uh, let's go ahead and make our character. Uh, I'll let you know when time starts, but it's gonna be a minute. Uh, we're starting with Stabomancer. That's actually required. Uh, and I'm gonna choose Gruff A and voice pitch it all the way up to skip dialogue as fast as possible for whenever I do talk. We're going to, we'll get to that. Um, actually, Amy, give me a number between one and five. Six. Oh, six is fine. Hey, uh, tech, give me a number between one and five. You all can't hear this, but that's fine. Oh, did four. They, did they mute? Four? Okay, four. All right, we're doing ten randomized, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. We're going to do three more. Tech just said three. One, two, three. All right, this is our character for the run. Uh, so Gruff A is the only thing that really matters in Stabomancer, um, as well in terms of class. I'm choosing Village Idiot for more crit damage. Uh, I'm going to cancel out the spell cooldown and then dump it all into crit damage. We'll get to why I chose that later. And we'll just call ourselves Aimbot. So I'm going to start this cutscene. Timer doesn't start quite yet, but we're going to have to wait for this dialogue to play through. So... This, the story of this game is you're in a cave with Tina, Andy Samberg, and Wanda Sykes, left and right, respectively, uh, playing Dungeons and Dragons, basically, or Bunkers and Badasses. So you're like, world of fantasy, trying to imagine the story as you go, and Tina's the dungeon master. Neat concepts, in, in, in essence. It's something different than what normally happens in a Borderlands game, but uh, it's going to be a little different. You know, grenades are spells and... Guns are got crossbows on them to play into the fantasy thing, so it's 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 a little different. It's it's kind of neat. Uh, we're just gonna kind of wait for this cutscene to play. It's like a it's like a minute or two before we actually start the time. Oi! It, I wish there was a way to skip this, but unfortunately not. We just have to wait. Uh, I should mention also, actually, I'm playing on the initial Steam release of this game. You can this came out on Epic six months before that, but I'm playing on the initial version that came out on Steam. It's not the fastest version; it's just the one that was I decided to use. Um, the initial Epic version is actually the fastest for a specific gun, but uh, it's not. It's not make or break. I don't have to use that version. All right. About 30 seconds out, and we'll get started. Uh, before we get started, I also mentioned um, I'm sort of walking in the footsteps of a giant here. Uh, I want to thank Deceptics, who's coming later in the show, for basically doing all of this work for me. Give it a time. Two, one, start. Uh, Deceptics found like most, or at least I'm going off of Deceptics PB, so 
a lot of stuff. Thank him for uh, what you're about to see. Uh, movement is uh, slotting your butt on the ground a lot. It's the fastest way to move around in this game, so you'll see me do this for the next two or so hours. And there's not really a better way to do this. I'm gonna have a slight case of rug burn. So this is the tutorial section. It's about eight minutes long, uh, but there's a couple small things that we'll learn in terms of tricks that we can do to actually speed up this game. Uh, example will come at the later section, uh, probably about six and a half, seven minutes in, we'll get uh, the first thing that we can use to skip dialogue. But for now, it's literally just gonna be play the game until the first, um, the first fight. I'm gonna grab the melee weapon. And just gonna keep moving forward. There's not really much going on here. Uh, if I time this right, I can slide under most of this rock. Okay, there you go. And I'm just gonna keep uh, getting some rug burn. This is rug burn the run. Or I guess dirt burn. Whatever you want to call it. So there will be small things I'll do for optimizations here like I'll go down a hill and I'll just let it slide all the way just for a little bit more speed because if I started running and then sliding again it would slow me down here's just like I don't need to do this jump but I just do it uh, there we go mantle over the ledge and same thing here I'm just gonna jump over this tree because there's a slight hill I can slide down for a little bit more speed and here's the first gun we're gonna get out of this chest but we gotta wait for more dialogue waiting for dialogue will be a theme and we'll try to minimize it as much as possible. And open the chest, and look, it's a gun! It's a gun! Thanks, Tina. This thing's half rust, but it'll still put holes in someone. Wait, there's guns in fantasy? You're in Tina's fantasy, baby! Alrighty. I'm gonna wait here, and I'm gonna wait until this next move here, and then I'm gonna jump mantle on that to save just a little bit of time of waiting around. And then we'll get to the first fight section, which does have actually the first small trick. Uh, it has a different like ways that you can use it, which is dialogue skipping. Uh, but we'll get the better version later. Right now, we'll, we'll sort of use the version that we have. There he is. So this one's just memorizing the spawns. There's not really much else you can do to speed this up besides just killing everything when it spawns. Oh, come on. These crossbow pistols have travel times. So you sometimes have to lead your shot in order to actually get the kill. All right, so first trick here, I'm going to jump on this. I'm going to open this chest into photo mode, and I'm going to let the game keep playing out while that dialogue's playing in the background, which will actually, like, it, like, freezes the game, but it doesn't. So, like, the game knows it's playing high-priority dialogue, but at the same time, it's waiting for actions to happen in the world, like that barrel spawning. So I basically freeze the game thinking there's high-priority di high dialogue playing, which skips everything else underneath it as you're sitting there waiting for other actions. So that's one way we can skip dialogue, is by going into photo mode, letting the game continue to play out in terms of actually playing in the background, and then we can let other dialogue skip while we're doing that. What are you doing over here? I missed that one arrow above his head. Come on. All right, small fight optimization here. I'm going to wait for this guy to spawn. I'm going to hit this ice barrel at him and blow it up for some more damage. And the only thing you have to kill here is the badass. Everything else will just despawn. Alrighty. So that's the first part. And then we're going to get the next good gun once we get inside the castle. Uh, here's the first reason we choose uh, Stabomancer. I'm going to go into skills. I'm going to pick Haste there. Haste just gives me more movement speed, but just like a flat amount. So it's I think it's 1% per point or it's 2% per point. Uh, but then I can double it if I use my spell ability. So right now I have just an extra 2% movement speed. It's a very small amount, but it will add up as once I get all five points into the skill. It's the, uh, it's the old Borderlands 2 meme of... Uh, jumping is a one percent Funny, faster. <laughs> yeah, except for it's permanent for me now. Alright, so we're just gonna keep walking in here and go get the next gun. This gun is gonna be super useful. Oh, come on. Get out of my way. 
All right, so this gun right here, this this gun most of the time spawns here. I believe there is a, can a chance where it doesn't spawn, but most of the time it will be there. So this is the doll SMG with that shoots four cryo pellets, and luckily enough, uh, skeletons are resistant to or um, weak to cryo damage. So they give you like a super good gun to use in the tutorial section, so you can just mow through everything. So now I'm doing a trick called swap reloading. Uh, it is an easy trick to understand what happens, but it's very hard to understand how you break it. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm pulling the gun out with a full magazine, and as long as I aim down sight and then I swap off the weapon and back to it really quickly, the gun will just fully reload. So I don't have to reload this gun anymore. I can just quickly swap guns like that and my gun will fully reload it like, in my hands. All right, and then small optimization here. Normally you have to melee this chain, but you can use your action skill on it. So you don't have to go all the way up. The bone dry air of the crypt and now that we have a spell, we can use that second part of haste, throw our spell just into the ether, and then get a little bit more movement speed. So with swap loading, this gun becomes super, super powerful. You can just mow through things. Uh, one unfortunate downside of this particular gun is that it does have this like weird cooldown in terms of the fire rate, so if you just keep shooting it too much, it'll actually shoot slower. Uh, my goal here is to kill everything so quickly that Valentine doesn't talk. Okay, I did it. No, Valentine talks! Never mind. But as you can see, like, the gun's starting to shoot, like, slower here. It's just how this gun works, so if I swap reload too much, the gun will just start shooting slower. It's sort of a weird trade-off of using this gun. Well, yeah, man, it's ice. Of course, it's gonna shoot slower. Gets cold. Oh yeah, sure. All right, come on, open the door. All right, first boss. He's right here. Gonna slam into the cutscene just for a little bit of extra speed while falling down. Ignore the bottom part of my screen. And we're just gonna completely destroy this guy. I'm trying to keep him stuck in my action skill so he doesn't teleport away, and my action skill can just do all the damage. Alright, cool. He's dead, and now we get to wait, like, a minute here while we're waiting for Dragon Lord to break out of his cage. Grab some free loot, why not? Everyone say hi to Will Arnett! The voice, the voice cast for this game is a little... Strange, uh, for the previous Borderlands games, that's for sure. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, not happening. Come on, the Fate Maker never beats the villain in the first quest. Still, the shock. What a drew you to this game to start speedrunning it? Besides the fact that um, I asked you to do it. <laughs> I um, I don't know. I kind of like. Wonderlands has this neat charm to me, so it was just something that I looked at and was like, okay, like that seems neat to run. I watched the Septics do a bunch of runs, and then it just like, I don't know, it just something about it clicked to me. I just decided to start doing it. I wouldn't say there's anything super crazy about it. Um, it's, it's actually also not a hard run to do, uh, unlike previous Borderlands games where it gets really difficult, like Borderlands 2. Did you, uh, you can do this run generally at any skill because the tricks aren't that hard to perform. Thanks, Andy Sandberg. Appreciate it. Uh, and actually, I didn't mean to switch this gun, so I'm going to switch back to my other one. Alright, so this is probably the like bigger thing that was different about this game compared to other Borderlands games. is Instead of being first person all the time, you change into this mode, which is like a tabletop-esque kind of mode. It's a neat kind of thing. It uses, like, small little ways to, like, transport you between the different, like, maps and stuff, but overall it's just kind of like a time sink for 20 seconds. Um, I don't have to do this fight, so instead of doing this fight, I can just quit to menu and I can skip it. I, I thought the tabletop thing was, like, a kind of interesting way to do it for this game, to show, like, overworld traversal. Because, like, yeah. overworld traversal has never been fun in a Borderlands game. Like, so at least I, I appreciated that they were experimenting with ways to, like, make it interesting. Yeah, And then they've, they've got little things to make it more tabletop-esque, like the soda can that turns into a river, the bottle caps being bridges. Like, it's themed pretty well. 
So it's it's a nice little diversion if you're just playing casually. Oh man, this is the best. All right. I am so glad. All right, first big fight section coming up here. Like this whole level, I'm going to be fighting things in different areas. Um, I will also use the first instance of easier dialogue skipping. Uh, so at the end of the previous level, I picked up a. What's well? I need to press this button. Uh, I meant to pick up, or I picked up a scroll, which if you're familiar with Orleans 2 or pre sequel. Uh, of echo logs, that's what those are in this game. Uh, those are echo logs. The scrolls just like play dialogue, and I have them in my pocket, and I can play them whenever I want to. Uh, that reason or that thing is the reason I'm playing on an older patch because they fixed something with this, uh, which is why I need to play on an older version so I can skip dialogue with it. So once I finish this fight, you'll see uh, how that works. So for here, I just need to kill everything basically by this door. As long as things stop hiding behind chest high walls. Oh, you're here already. That's fast. Thought I had more things to kill. Alright. So, I'm gonna play this dialogue here. I'm frozen. I'm gonna play this dialogue before I walk into this area. And I'm gonna let this cutscene play out. And then I'm going to replay it again. And I'm going to go into photo mode, actually. So now the scroll is playing in the background, uh, just like we did earlier with uh, the photo mode for the barrels. But now I have a... Oh, I forgot to unpause the game. Uh, now we have a scroll doing that instead. And this scroll, just like with pre-sequel and the starting characters, this scroll has stupidly high priority, and you can skip, like, almost every dialogue in the game with it. And it's just in your pocket all of the time. So I didn't have to listen to Mike say anything, I just was able to grab the Fantasy Four and just walk out the door. So you'll be hearing the same dialogue uh, for the next hour and a half. <laughs> but if you thought you were tired of it in pre-sequel, and we got it again here. Oh yeah, it's, it's it doesn't end. I got a level up bonus, so I'm gonna use that to kill the rock troll. Probably you're the last guy I need to kill. Cool. Alright, so we're just trying to kill the we're just trying to do these fights as fast as possible here. There's not really much else to do here. Oh, that killed him. I didn't expect that to kill. Uh, let's go kill this guy over here. Uh, not really much is going in my head in terms of, like what I'm doing here. I'm just like trying to sort of congregate around the end point of the objective. So I'm trying to kill things that are like close to me, but also far away to the objective point. So I can just work my way slowly towards the objective and finish it out. Basically, like when I kill the last enemy, I should be finished like right here at the end of this catapult. So I'm going to plant this fantasy four. I'm going to blow that up and then we go into photo mode and let this whole thing explode. So... More dialogue skipping, but you don't have to hear it this time. Can you uh, recite the dialogue as well as you can from the other Borderlands games? Uh, absolutely not. I've, I've <laughs> tuned this out so fast. Uh, all I know is that the Fate Maker's journey begins as so many do. With a heart full of fire and dreams of dragons and magic, it can end only in one way with the ultimate defeat of all evil. I think is that one. I Someone can correct That's, me. I mean, to be fair, I can only remember Claptrap start boot up sequence from TPS, so. Yeah. Oh, come on. Is it badass spawn? Badass spawn. Cool. I am just getting bullied here. Oh, is it? That's a suicide bomber. I need to get away from him. Oh. I almost opened my Steam overlay. Where? Did you not jump up? You should have jumped up. Fantasy 4, blow this up. And I'm going to check this chest for a pistol. I got a pistol, but I think it's the wrong manufacturer. Yeah, it's the wrong manufacturer. Never mind. So I'm looking for a gun. I'm starting to look for some, for some gear here. Uh, I don't need it quite yet. I need it after this fight. So... 
Oh, whoops, Mike talked. Alright, so one more fight and then we can get to the next map. But that next map's also a fight, so there's just a bunch of like small fights that we're just doing here. Uh, I'm gonna hit this fast travel point here, so that way I can do a save quit later, and then I can come back to it. I got this dialogue skip wrong, so unfortunately Mike's gonna try to talk to us for a little bit. Oh, I left before it investigated! It turned on, so I thought it was good. <laughs> I know in a lot of other Borderlands games, like, the XP route is pretty tight. Um, is it that way for this game, or is it, like, fairly loose? Um, we'll do one farm, and then we will uh, basically ignore everything else in terms of XP. So, like, I'll get my, I'll get the XP I need early in the run, and then I won't do anything else. Why are you running away? Come here. And he's looking away from me, too, so I can't crit him. This guy's being rude. Yeah, so this is, I'm starting to hit the limit of like why swap or uh, swap reloading this gun is kind of painful. Is the, uh, the gun is starting to slow down really on its fire rate. Come on. Oh, I'm out of ammo. Even better. Let's go get to an ammo box real quick. Fix that problem. We'll be fine. Oh, this rock troll is here. I forgot about him. Really, really getting just absolutely great. That's I, I would blame RNG. No, I just forgot to check my ammo. That's entirely on me. <laughs> Why is this? This one dude is holding up my spawns. Alright, once this group on the roof dies, we're, we'll be good to move on. Oh, one more spawn. Okay, come here. Nope, two more spawns. So that's one of the things of I broke the swap reload there, so I had to reload the gun, put it away, and then put back. Journal page is this one. Alright, so here we're gonna do a quick little a different another version of dialogue skipping and like movement skipping. I'm gonna hit this waypoint here once Mike shows up. And then I'm gonna quit to skip dialogue and a bunch of other animations. But since I hit the fast travel point earlier, I'm just going to spawn at the door. I see chat's already having fun with the scroll Come messages. <laughs> All right. Yeah, everybody's trying to remember it. Uh, that's a shotgun. That is a shotgun. All right, so we're farming for gear here. Um, I am looking for a black powder pistol uh, that is otherwise known as Jacob's. Uh, in this game. They renamed everything. This is sort of like a Borderlands 3 upgrade, so a lot of the things like look the same, but they're just rebranded to sort of fit the fantasy theme. That's two... Is that four Black Powder Snipers? What the... Ah, uh, that's fun. And luckily, because of how leveling works in this game, the loot pool is limited to what guns actually are available to drop right now, so I have a better chance of getting what I'm looking for. That's melee damage. Uh, I like that, actually. Yeah, alright, we got one. Uh, yeah, it's, this is more damage, too. Alright. Cool. Alright, we have a, we have a pistol. So, we're gonna work on, we're gonna work with this. It's not the best, but it's workable. So, first thing I do when I load in here is I'm gonna play the dialogue again to skip a bunch of other stuff that's going in the background so I can just shoot things immediately. It wouldn't be, like, too big of a time loss if I didn't do that. It would just be, like, a little bit of annoyance. But I'm also going to do the Borderlands tradition of changing my fire button to scroll wheel. Because swap reloading with a gun that has a really high fire rate is really busted. And you'll see why in probably about 10 seconds. So here I just need to get to the end of the, uh, end of the walkway here towards the bridge. And get a good demonstration of this gun. So yeah, this is uh, this is scroll shooting with swap reloading. It's definitely not busted at all. And this is what I'm going to be doing like the rest of the run. Wait, is something not dead? Oh, it is here. 
I was waiting for that prompt to show up, or the objective to show up, but it didn't show up. With a heart full of fire. Oh yeah, uh, pistols in this game are also very... Um, to use... They're, they're definitely the most powerful weapon type. Overpowered is what probably most people would say. It's the strongest weapon in the game, and it's not even close. Uh, these things output so much damage, even not accounting for swap reloading. So we've really just looped back around to Borderlands 1. Yeah, basically. And also the best thing about these guns is that if I get a crit, the bullets will ricochet into... Um, the bullets will ricochet into another enemy, which is kind of nice. And then, and then I can skip this scroll by just playing another scroll on top of it, which is pretty nice. I can talk to Mike, and then I can go back here to go talk to uh, the Queen of Brighthoof. I wonder if you all can guess who it actually is, based on the name of the town. With a heart full of fire and dreams of... The gates of Her Majesty's castle swing open as... And yeah, it's, bu it's Butt Stallion. Alright, some more photo mode dialogue skipping. I played a, I played a scroll and then I'm just gonna wait here in photo mode while every other dialogue line just skips in the background. And I'm just gonna wait for her to come back to this spot about here and then turn around and stand still. Once she does that, I can leave. Like that. And then we can leave. Also, love hearing the grunts. You're also going to hear those a lot. Actually, I'll just say this. Enjoy hearing things for the next 20 minutes. Like, just enjoy listening to things, because that's going to also change. It's going to be... It's, it's going to change. So even though, like, we're listening to a lot of dialogue, the, a, lot, a lot of stuff's going to change in, in, like, 20 minutes. All right. So I'm just trying to get a dialogue line to play here to skip all the initial dialogue. Uh, Zomboss is one of the few characters that will speak through this whole trick that I'm doing. It's, it's again, it, there's something just weird about her dialogue where she just will talk over it, but it, it's still useful to do it. Oh, she didn't make her sound effect there. That's weird. Dragons and magic. It will end only one way. With the Are you gonna make a doofus out of me and not talk? There she is. Okay, so it's like That's waiting for her to talk. Me, you cutie dummy. I told you I was possessive. That body sucked anyway. No, we just have to wait for this. Then you can't skip this one. one. Zomb boss is annoying. All right, so. With this area, you don't have to fight everything. Uh, the next two areas are actually locked by two specific enemies to open the door. And once you open the door, you kill a mini-boss to progress to the next area. So I just need to kill, like, enough enemies. So I'll probably kill, like, this guy right here. And that'll spawn these archers. Which then will unlock the door, which kills the mini-boss, or spawns the mini-boss that I need to kill. And then I need to wait for this chest to become unlockable so we can grab the things out of it. And then I'm going to wait for Zomboss to start talking again. And once this gate opens, we can move forward. Alright, cool. And then I'm going to make one swap uh, to... Did I not get one? I didn't get one. Okay. Why? Normally you get a, a shorter spell cooldown so I can have haste up more often, but I didn't get one. That's interesting. I'm gonna grab some ammo because my ammo's a little low. It didn't give me any. That's cool. I should have expected that. So the same thing. I'm just gonna kill like one or two enemies. So that way I can make sure that the archers here spawned, which they did. And then I'm going to kill Zomboss. Also, I just noticed that I'm level 5, so I can put on this armor that I get. Uh, funnily enough, one of the armor pieces you get at the start of the game is, like, the best armor for the run. Like, they just give it to you, and it works perfectly for us. 
Uh, the armor just gives us 20% extra damage to skeletons and zombies, and we're fighting those for like most of the run, which is hilarious. Alright, Blood Sign's gonna open this door for us, and we basically have to make a giant circle. Alright, I'm gonna go... I'm gonna need you to root for me, Amy. I'm gonna go for a jump that is annoyingly hard, and it saves like only two or three seconds, something like that. You got this, man. I believe in you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pointless to do this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Is that the jump? Nope, that one. Nope, I missed it. Alright, I'll try it one more time. Uh, I need haste again, though. But... Come on... No, I didn't get it. All right. Oh, well, it's fine. I believe in you. No, it's not worth to go for again. It's it's annoyingly difficult, and it's not worth going for. So <laughs> I I try it once just for just for the giggles, but it never works out. Uh, this one. So this is not a chest. It's a mimic. Oh, goodness. Who would have guessed? All right, I'm going to grab this book, and then I'm going to quit to menu. Because I hit a save point earlier, and I'm just going to travel right back to that one by quitting. It skips me having to do a bunch of stuff to sort of walk around. Or maybe... Oh, I did hit the wrong one. I forgot about that one. That's a save point. Never mind. I look smart. <laughs> I forgot there was a save point there, because it's, it's right... It's right. There's a save point right here. It was the one I was worried about. All right, now it's on. Uh, I'll s now I skip this. This is skipping animations by doing this. I lost track of how many save quits there is, but in the beginning of the run, there's a lot of save quitting, and then there's not going to be like any save quitting for the most part. Uh, I just realized I have more haste to equip. Oh, uh, also that, and give me, give me crit. The fate maker's journey. Make sure I'm on the right tab. <laughs> And we'll keep moving forward to the boss fight. I feel like I'm going to be able to recite this perfectly by the time this run is over. Probably. All right, let's go kill this badass for just a little bit of extra, extra XP. Takes like two seconds, so might as well do it. Alright, let's check this just to see if I can get a better pistol. Uh, that's not better, and I'll go ahead and sell all this stuff so I can get some money. And refill the ammo, and now we'll fight a boss. Alright, so this is how uh, you fight bosses in this run. As, uh, you scroll, and then you just shoot. Alright, so I missed it. Wait, why do you auto- oh, you drop reloading. Or, uh, swap reloading, right. Yeah, yeah, swap reloading. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just grab this stuff. Why did that... Thank you, play. So, yep. Uh, black powder shoot, as you can see, at 11.4 bullets a second, which is kind of sick. And then if you just instantly reload, you can just keep shooting basically forever. So I'm gonna grab that, and then... I'm gonna wait for Zomboss to be stabbable. Like that. And then I'm going to play more dialogue over her because her talking there messes with the priority system of this scroll that I have playing. So I'm just going to replay it just to make sure. Oh, Tina. That's what I was talking about. All right. So I'm going to grab this and then I'm going to fast travel to Brighthoof. And then we're done here. All right. So now we're going to, now we're going to farm. Uh, well, we're going to do a couple small things, and then we're going to start farming. Uh, this is the only farm we'll do in the run, and it's only a few minutes long. It's not too bad. Uh, again, I'm going to check for... Is that a... That was a shotgun. Okay. And so we're going to do a bunch of save quits here, just to skip dialogue and animation. So I'm going to put the sword in, and then I'm going to quit the menu. And this next save quit's even better. Just you wait. Also, the, even though this is the hub town, this is the longest map to load in the run, which is also even better. All right, so I'm going to come here. I'm going to make this objective check mark, and then I'm going to quit to menu. <laughs> this is Borderlands three vibes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, there is. 
Uh, for uh, I think for people who I don't know, when do Borderlands Three Go came ahead. out, and this this is like uh, I, this, the, we're going to be reminiscing about Borderlands games tonight because you know it's it's my final Tuesday show. I get to get to have a little nostalgia. Uh, <clears throat> when Borderlands Three came out, save quitting was so powerful that uh, BGM routed save quitting into the run, and I think it was like a hundred and forty or something like that was optimal. Uh, which added like an hour and a half RTA. <laughs> so your yeah, run would be like five hours in game time and then sev like seven and a half hours RTA. It was so bad. Yeah, it was. It's great. And I remember we did we did a Borderlands to run like shortly after it came out and it was like eight hours or something at the time, yep. which was also fun. We had world record at 756 and we had it for about two days and then six and Nisia took it with a uh, like 754 or something and then nobody ran the game for a while and then Utsu and Deceptics I think got like a two hour time or something like that I saw as much tutorial stuff as teaching us how to do like a bunch of character customization and things um, also, ignore Bus Stallion on the floor. She's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. No, 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 Mike. She's not dead. She's just resting. It's fine. Don't worry about it. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many. Right, so I'm just waiting here for a scroll to pop up, and then we can keep moving. And dreams of dragons and magic. There it is. It will end only one way. So, a couple more small things, and then we'll start farming. Yeah. Go ahead and check. Nope. What once felt so sure is now. Oh wait, I can skip this. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so Should be able to skip that. There you go. Dragons magic. It will end only once. Alright, so we're gonna go to the dock here. We're gonna do a couple small things here. We're gonna wait for Mike to just teleport his way over here. And then, the there you go. I'm going to kneel. So and uh, now he's definitely knighting me. Don't worry about it. Can you unpause? Thank you. There you go. He's definitely knighting me. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Right. With a heart full of fire. And now we're going to get a boat. This is this is photo mode dialogue skipping. It's great. <laughs> you just, you just got to wait for people to do things. Dreams and build that. Cool. And now we're off to farm. So luckily enough, when you fast travel back to Brighthoof, you leave a portal behind in the middle of the town, which if you take it, it will take you back to the last location that you teleported from, which in this case, right in front of Zomboss, which is the enemy I'm going to farm for until I'm level 11 and a half. Wait, what was that rifle? What was that? It was a sniper. Okay, that was a assault rifle. So we're gonna farm Zomboss for a few minutes. So I'm gonna get to a eleven and a half, and then we will uh, we will farm away. Oh, and I wanted to do that. These first two farms are the worst because I don't have any other great action skills or like things to help me with. I just sort of have to use this gun and whatever I can get away with. I don't have any health, well, but I want to kill you. If you've uh, if you've got time, if we're just vibing on a on a farm, I can do. Uh, I could do to you what I did to Deceptics when uh, he, uh, he did his all quest run. Actually, was it Deceptics? I don't remember. Someone did an all quest run for me, and I hit him with trivia in uh, oh, Circle sure. of Fire. Yeah, sure, we can do all that. Right, one sec. I gotta, uh, I gotta find it. <laughs> uh, someone asked in chat why a half. It's just because that works out to be enough to, I think, get us to level 19 at the ending fight. Which just, it just pushes you a little bit more. So might as well take the extra few seconds to get the kill now. And, you know, get that extra bump for a little less damage reduction. Uh, someone in chat asked, uh, do, we hear any, do you hear any bard dialogue? Uh, yes. We'll hear the bard. This pistol's not great, but it's workable. Oh, the boss is one HP. All right, where did it? There we go. I'm looking in the wrong spot. Uh, you're gonna be done with the, by the time I bring up this <laughs> this sheet. That's fine. Uh, ooh, that is. I don't have enough money for that. Wait, what was that gun? Hold up. Uh, 
It's 21. What is this one? This one's 29. And that's, what, 7.7? .7? No, I can't afford that. It's not worth it. All right, so now I also just unlocked the other skill of the class from the shadows. Um, this is basically zero skill or flax skill just again, because they love remaking this skill. And uh, every shot that I shoot in this skill um, is a crit, so it's pretty good. All right. Oh, shoot, I just realized you wrote like half of this trivia. Oh, is this the trivia for the... Uh... Yeah. For the live show. Oh, okay. I mean, we can see if I remember them. Yeah, actually, that's true. You did write this like six months ago. I wrote the Hat and Time stuff. No, no, no. This this is for uh, the um, the All Quest run like, in like December of this year. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Um, actually, all this is... Oh, I don't remember writing that, actually. Oh, maybe you didn't. Okay. Anyway, all this is Borderlands 2 trivia. Okay. Um, all right. So so you're an, uh, you're an Axton man, right? Yeah, yeah. Um. What are Axton's first three skills on the right side in his green tree? Uh, expertise, impact, and no impact is impact. No impact's on the green. It's impact blue. Oh man, first three. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you a hint. Uh, it is like a what mag. It is a, a saying. Oh, man. I think it's like a military This thing. is... I have no clue. Uh, it is ready, willing, and able. What does that skill even do? No, no, no. That's, that's his first three <laughs> skills. Like, his first skill is ready. Second one is willing. Third one is able. In the green yeah. tree? Trust me, I, I looked this. I know these are right because I actually did look this up. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. In again, this is all Borderlands Two trivia, and we're doing this because Shockwave is just doing a very long farm right now. So might as well just keep it a little interesting. Uh, what is the order of barrels to shoot to activate the Tannis Easter Egg? Uh, Burgop. Yep. Blue, red. Green, orange, purple. That's right, Burgop. Burgop. Back from when we did uh, co-op all quests. Yeah, because I was the one who shot yep. them. Uh, what? This pistol is starting to show its age already. That's not great. I'm going to grab some stuff so I have some money. Come on. Let me quit. Thank you. are still cranking through this guy. Uh, this is pretty slow. This looks fast, but this is comparatively much slower because the pistol is... Workable, but not great. All right. Uh, what skill lets Krieg revive players once in exchange for downing himself? I didn't play Krieg that much. I did one playthrough to Max, and then I didn't touch him. To touch him again. I'm sorry, I baited uh, you. I thought you actually played Krieg more. I did play Krieg a little bit, but. That was years if, ago. If you know it in uh, chat, feel free to uh, make fun of this experienced Borderlands runner for this is the Borderlands not trivia it. power yeah. hour here. This is power hour. I I know there's at least one person in chat who will know it immediately. Yeah. But it is uh, redeem the soul. <sighs> redeem the oh uh, yeah yep yeah, that's okay. Uh, Uh, that was a black powder. Hold up. Uh, that was a sniper. This is just unfortunate. Like, I just have to use, like, an acceptable pistol for farming, which is why these are taking so much longer than they should. If there was just one thing different about this gun, or should I guess technically two, but if there's one thing different about this gun, I could kill this boss twice as fast. That's how much RNG can hurt this run. Is the one thing that if it did more damage? Uh, if it was a crossbow <laughs> pistol with a damage accessory, but also <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if it was purple rarity, it had perfect parts. Yes, yeah, so true. <laughs> All right, have you missed some more trivia? Okay. Um, what? Uh, this one's this one should be a fairly easy one. Um, what does the name of the binary boss in Digistruct Peak translate to? Uh, OMG WTF. Yep. Actually, it's OMG WTH, but close enough. 
Uh, this gun does more damage, but it has a smaller mag. Hard to see how this works out. Uh, this one I had to look up, and I'm not actually sure if this is right. Uh, when Warden captures Roland and takes him to the end of that place that we all n definitely know, so I'm not going to bother saying the name of. Friendship Gulag. Uh, no, 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 the other, the first place. Bloodshot Ramparts? Yeah, that place. Hey, listen, we didn't need to see it. We all knew it. Yeah, I definitely, definitely didn't forget it. Definitely you knew yeah. that one. Definitely. Um, how long does it take before Warden leaves? <laughs> that Th I don't This one know. might not be accurate. I, I had to source this from a bunch of posts online from people being like, I failed this. But I, I think it's right. Okay. I got a weird weapon which can work. We're going to give this a shot. Um, this is definitely a wacky gun to use for this run, but it does work. Alright, so you're starting to see I'm chunking the health a lot harder now, because yeah. I have a gun that's stacking damage every time I shoot the boss. Dang, this is doing... Whoa! Wow. Okay, yeah. Right. So, this is acceptable. I'll have to get something later, but, like, this will work. But, uh... Anyway, yeah, I don't, I don't remember the time. Yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> it, like, almost nobody knows it because uh, you, um, it's really difficult to actually fail. Uh, but LCU next in chat has it correct. It is five minutes before Warden leaves. Sounds about you right. You have to take that long to kill him. Uh, otherwise, he goes to the Friendship Gulag. Uh, what is the name of Brick's dog? Oh, uh, Dusty. Yeah, there we go. Dusty was just a puppy. Yep. Oh, God, that's been a while. You're, you're really making me dig through the archives on oh, this one. Oh, of course I am. Yeah, dude, I'm asking the <laughs> questions that I didn't ask uh, the other one <laughs> at the other time. <laughs> Only got a few farms left, it looks like. So I gotta... Let's see. All right, uh... We're, we're digging more into the, the glitch knowledge here. Um, what pistol barrel, uh, when you stack it, or no, that's not right. What, what two sniper barrels have no negative attributes? No negative. Yeah, so this is like when you crit stack it. I'll, I'll give you that part for free. We're talking about crit stacking. Oh, uh, I want to say uh, Molly one. And no negative. Nothing negative. Actually, this might not be good stacking. This might be just from that parts list. Uh, I want to say Molly Wan's one of them. That's, is that that's at least correct? That is correct. That is one of them. I want to say Hyperion has negative effects. Oh, no, they're legendary. That's two legendaries, by the way. Yeah, normal amount of legendaries. Um, I can't remember if this is before the legendary drop rate buff. They buff legendary drop rates in this game. I forget if I'm playing on that patch or not. Um, Molly Wan and... My gut wants to say Vladoff, but that it sounds wrong. You are correct, actually. It is Vladoff Ooh. and Molly Wan. Because yeah, Vladoff, Vladoff has just increased fire rate, yeah. right? I, That's all I think is. this actually may have been me looking at the parts Hyperion list. is minus damage. Yeah. I, th I think this may have been so me looking at the parts list and going, nothing, these two don't have a minus. Uh, that actually should be enough. We're going to go with this. All right. Thank you for enjoying Borderlands 2 trivia. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So we're going to do the big, the big glitch that makes this run possible on this character. So um, Savomancer has this skill called Ghost Blade. Um, I can do some funny things with it. Like, I can throw it into the void and then travel away. Um, if I do that, uh, something weird will happen with my other skill. Actually, I don't, I don't think I needed to do that. That's true. I didn't need to do that. Uh, but we'll do it again here. All right. So I'm going to grab this quest. And I'm going to quit to menu to skip dialogue and stuff. But if I do that um, and then use my other action skill, there's a neat little bonus I get for doing that. So we'll we'll see what that looks like. Uh do you do on ghost blade. Anyway for it to come up. So like this. So you can see my hand sort of like moved just a tiny amount. That's what I want to see. 
Uh, and then I want this menu to show up. Alright, so now I've done all that. Now I can start fighting things. We'll see what that means in a sec. I'm also actually going to switch my guns so they're in the right spot. Wait, yeah, someone in chat asked the question I was just about to ask. Is this just Buck Up Glitch 2.0? Nope. Ah. It's actually more useful than Buck Up Glitch. Well, I mean, uh, just wait. It's activated in a similar way, if that's what you mean. Yeah. All right, so now if I activate from the shadows, um, something weird is happening with my uh, alt bar in the middle of my screen, if you want to tell me what's going on. Uh, it's yellow. That's weird. Um, what's it... It should be doing something. What's it not doing? Uh... Hmm. It's not going down. I'll just give you the <laughs> answer. trying to see how long I can be stupid for. <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, I, I did yeah. know this is infinite uh, from the shadows. Yeah, so now I have a action skill active where enemies can't see me, they don't aggro on me, and all of my bullets crit. Uh, crit is a... I should put that in quotes. Is um, it like tombstone critting? Where, like... It's not as much as a regular crit, yes. But, yeah, so now my action skill just never runs out. Cool. So... This is what really makes this run possible. Uh, you can do this run without this glitch, but good luck. It's very painful. Uh, you can also do, like... You can do weird things with this on other classes, but... Uh, if you there's also other ways to activate it. This is just, of course, the best way to do it because it now becomes active or it becomes infinite on every single map. Uh, that's the big thing. But also, you don't need anything else to do it, uh, unlike the other original way that we had found or the community found to do this, which was to do it with a fast travel station. Not every map has a fast travel station. Oh, I need to reload again. I mess up that thing. Oh, he spawned. Where did he spawn? Uh, he spawned in building, I think. There he is. Alright, cool. So yeah, this is uh, this is the glitch of the run, and also you can hear that like everything's muffled now for the rest of the run, which is pretty good. Okay, we unlock the cheese curve. Oh, whoops. The, the Fate Maker's journey begins as so many do. Alright, I'm gonna let this thing rise away. I think I could have saved quite there, but I'd rather just wait a few seconds. It will end only one way. Alrighty. Now we're heading into the, the dankness, and unfortunately, I do have to farm for another gun again. So I need to find uh, one more gun. The weak wild and ghosts. The soul energy weighs heavily. You have reached dankness. Uh, okay, yeah. fine. Just then, all the trees die. And then mushrooms grow out of the rotting corpses. Now it's mega dank. Are you happy? Oh, yeah. There you go. Just how dank are we talking? I need a dank ranking. You gotta rank the dank. If I'm being frank, you gotta rank the dank. Oh, you need me to crank out a dank rank? Well, the Franks would say, sank out a sank. That's a, that's a lot of dank. Okay, I just wanted that dialogue line to Thank play. you, Tina. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to let that dialogue line play before I quit, but now I'm gonna fall for a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, actually someone asked, um... Uh, why would you need level 19 if you're uh, this overpowered with this glitch? Um, because the, the more under-leveled you are, the end of the game is like 30-ish, something like that. I can't remember the exact number. It's like 30, 31, somewhere around there. Uh, the further you are away from an enemy's level, the less damage you do. So the, the even if it's just like one level higher that we can go, the, the smaller that gap is, the more damage we'll do. So if I can even just push it, if I can waste 10 seconds just to push it one level higher, it's worth it. Makes sense. Uh, by the way, yes, I am free scroll shooting. I saw that question in chat. I have scroll bound to or um, scroll bound to shoot, and then I just swap between my guns really quickly while aiming down sight to instantly reload the weapon. Yeah, uh, for for people curious, because it it, it is a fairly linear um, <laughs> the, the progression. We're talking about the damage that Shockwave is doing to enemies. Um, Again, the only numbers that I know are from Borderlands 2 because this is the game I've looked into the most. But uh, <laughs> at 18 levels under an enemy, uh, you're doing 90% less damage to them. So Shock's going to be like 13 or 14 levels under. Um, which, like it, I mean, it just directly scales down by about 5% each time. 
um, which still means he's going to be doing like 60 or 70% damage reduction, um, which is pretty significant. So yeah, it, like doing taking a little bit of time to do 5% more damage to the final bosses is pretty good. I I got four damage higher on my pistol. I was say you can make noise. I don't know what that means. Uh, <laughs> I saw fifty. And I was like, oh, that's so much better. And then no, it was four damage higher. So we're gonna keep looking. I don't know how much. I'll give it. I'll give another two minutes in terms of the timer I have running to check. And then we'll go with this. I have another gun that I can guarantee get later that normally I would skip uh, if I have good enough gun, but uh, I might have to go get it if this doesn't work out. Uh, Shock, I don't want to use backup saves wave. I mean, they're not needed <laughs> for this game. Hush. <laughs> RNG, baby. And it's it's uh, it's fairly common for Borderlands like, marathon runners to have like backup saves. Uh, so when I asked Shock, I was, I was pretty surprised that he doesn't have a backup gun uh, stashed. All that stuff. Cool. Which, I mean, there's definitely like. It'll be fine. Just kind of. It's unfortunate because, like, the last run I did here, I had an 88 Blue Jacobs, which was good enough to skip the gun I would normally get. But we'll see. Uh, that's. Nope, that's Stoker. Yeah, just uh, practice your RNG. Just. I mean, this is the last RNG farm I have to do. Like, I, this is the last time I have to farm anything. Otherwise, we're just going as soon as I get something here. But we'll see if I even get anything. Uh, that was Stoker? Yeah, it's Stoker. Nope. All right, so I'll give it another about a minute, minute and a half for, for the timer that I have going right now. We'll see uh, what I walk away with. It's not about what I'll finish with. It's just how painful it will be to finish. Uh, oh? 59 is better? Uh, how much money do I have now? I have 10,000. I think I can buy another gun. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep trying. 59 is... 59 is, like, acceptable. It won't be as bad as uh, 52. You might think that 7 damage is not a lot, but 7 damage is a lot. Oh, it's a one mag. That's that's that is the worst part about RNG farming for pistols in this game. Is crossbow pistols are the best, and they can have a damage bonus, which is also great. But then sometimes they can have one bullet in the mag, which is just awful. And you get baited when you see the other two pieces, and then you see. Oh, if I had the money, I'd buy that. All right, yeah, we'll just go with this. We're gonna go with this pistol. I don't really want to spend forever farming here. So, unfortunately, because I save quit, uh, I don't have infinite from the shadows anymore. Uh, the other way you can do it is you can also activate from the shadows when you enter a cutscene, which is that orange little marker over here. So, as I enter this cutscene, I'm going to activate from the shadows like this, and I will also have infinite from the shadows. That one is literally that easy. He's a little distracted at the moment. All right, so now I'm going to play some dialogue here. So, unfortunately, Torg's talking, and I can't hear him. It will end only yeah, infinite from the shadows. Again, also, very easy. Oh my god, please have... where? What is your spawn animation? Uh, there you go. That's it. So... This is just go go here, shoot things, go here, shoot things, go here, shoot things. And because I'm also invisible, no one sees me. Woo! We get to waste 30 seconds. So this enemy is a wealthy enemy. It's kind of great that we got this. Uh, this enemy doesn't die unless you punch it. So I have to sit here for like 30 seconds just punching this thing until it dies. And he's part of the spawn of this wave, so I have to kill him. Oh, uh, this is great. This is this is true marathon RNG right here. And one day. There you go. Now he's dead. Holy! That thing was 
inside the crystal bath whole time like an evil cocoon. Oh, that's under the mania. Maker's journey begins as so many do, with a heart full of fire and dreams of uh, and magic. We're having some great luck here. Only one way. It wouldn't be a live Borderlands run if it wasn't. <laughs> I mean. Last time, last time I did Borderlands runs on stage, it was uh, we got a cradle drop in the All Quest run from Warden. So, uh, whether they call that good RNG or lucky RNG, I'll let the, I'll leave that up to we you. We also got a quad that I that we forgot about for like a entire level. Oh yeah, that was the uh, original co-op run we did. No, it, I think we got a quad in the All Quest run. Uh, I'll take your word on it. Okay, I don't remember either. Right, so Alright, so I'm gonna I'm gonna photo mode wait here for this dialogue. And there you go. Once I see that thing turn on, I can go shooting things. I'm gonna start shooting things. This four mag is also not great. I thought that was gonna explode. So remember, I mentioned earlier about black powder guns. Um, if you hit a crit, it also ricochets on the enemies. That also counts for all of these shots while I'm in infinite from the shadows. So again, just makes it even better. Oh, come on. Or you need to come with me. I forgot to play that before I shot. I'm just gonna clear all these things out of his out of the way because unfortunately Torg can get stuck on these things, which is just funny. Because of course he can. He, he's still coming, cool. Keep going, Torg. The, the fate make the fate maker's journey begins. Uh, so actually it doesn't matter what scroll I play, I should mention that. Uh, some of the scrolls don't have the super priority thing. Um the the one that I'm playing now about a heart full of fire and stuff. That one has guaranteed super high priority and like works almost every time. The other ones I've has have some weird issues. I'm not sure why, but they do. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many This is where I'm getting out of my uh breadth of knowledge as to why that works the way it does. Dragons and magic. It will end only And I was gonna wait for Torga to open the door. The ultimate defeat of all evil. Ah mother loving explosions! I do too, Torque. Alright, we're gonna check for guns because we don't have a good one. Alright. Behold the horrid. Alright, so because I have this other gun which stacks damage high, I'm gonna just try this one instead. I'm gonna see how well this works out, but I, I wanna say this might be better, but it's kinda like I'm guessing at this point. Hello? Why did I not? I might actually die here because I'm dumb. I have different controls than what I'm used to for uh, playing an FPS. I have no idea what I just killed there. We're gonna accept it and move on. I have crouch on my mouse, which is what confuses me about this. All right, Banshee's dead. I'm gonna play some dialogue here, and we're gonna wait. Oh, cool, legendary. With a heart. That's what four now. Uh, three, I think. Oh, that can wait, hold up. These will explode and kill me. There we go. It will end only one way. That was a pistol. I didn't see what it was. Come on. Of all. All right, so there's more waiting. I was waiting for some animations to play. I'm gonna wait for Torg to come up here too. Uh, there he is. Hi, Torg. What's up? Oh, there he is. Oh, it's, I was on the journal page, but it said I wasn't on the journal page. As so many do. All right, and now we can go back to Brighthoof. Like I said, this gun's not great. We'll fix that uh, later once we get through the next map. But this will be this will work. This will work fine for now. The barbarian awaits you back at the city docks. Okay, let's get this stupid blessing on the ship. All right, who's ready for a a muted jam session? The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many. Because unfortunately, actually, no, wait, it might play normally here. Yeah, do you have like the music off or something? 
I do have the music off, actually. I just realized that. Thanks. I'll turn that back on. <laughs> it's like, uh, this whole round of like, hey, it's pretty quiet. <laughs> yeah, I'll turn that back on. I, I, I normally play other music because... Uh, yeah. No, I understand. I have other things to listen to. All right, music back on. Sorry, chat. <laughs> All right, so this is my favorite jam session. Uh, we're going to spawn the bigger cowbell. I'm going to photo mode, and then I'm going to go uh, I'm gonna get a drink. I'll be right back. All right, so uh, he's ready to learn this game. I'm just kidding. I'm not oh. actually leaving. It's going to... I don't know what I was going to do, but I was going to start doing a bit. Is that you wait here for a full minute. So jokingly during my runs, I just go get a drink. <laughs> yeah, we just we just get to watch this without any dialogue. It's unfortunate. This is actually one of the cool one of the better jokes in the game. Oh, we just watched Torg embrace the wave. Surf's up, dude. I mean, this would kill you if it was real life. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Nothing else in this game would, though. Everything else absolutely. is like dragons and magic. It will end only right. one way. So we're just gonna wait here for the uh, scroll the to spawn, and once we grab the scroll, begins, we can leave. As so many do, with a heart full of fight. The fate maker stops at nothing. And similar thing. Oop. It changes the your menu here. Journey but begins as so many do. More dialogue skipping. With this time we get to listen to it. Fire. Uh, I probably actually should have. Actually, yeah, no. I'm gonna take a detour real quick. Hold up. One way. I'm gonna. I forgot the because of the. Defeat. Farming, I don't have infinite from the shadows right now, so I'm going to fix that. Forgot how long this load is. <laughs> Unfortunate. Uh, skills, let me put on Ghostblade, and I'm going to actually choose my second class now, which is Berserker. Because Berserker has another... How many skill points have I been failing to put in? A lot, apparently. That should work. Streamer, you have skill points. <laughs> yeah, can we blame that one on chat? The chat did <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Skill points to use. Yeah, because normally with Borderlands stream is chat reminds you to the spend your skill points. Yeah. <laughs> the constant yeah. joke in so many Borderlands runs is that past a certain point, we just don't need skill points. So like, everybody just has to constantly remind the streamer that they have skill points. Oh, well, except for in this run, they're very useful. Yeah, and at 80%. The of uh, most Borderlands games. It will end only one way with the ultimate def The Fate Maker's journey begins right, as so I'm gonna wait till I can talk to him again. I think I talked to him too early. There we go. And then we can leave off screen. It will end only one way. And head to the, the uh the dungeon. Of all oh, I did it wrong. That's cool. Alright, well, this will be a little slower. Thought I had it right, but I guess I'll just set it up in the next map. There you go. Right, so this is just a dungeon. I just have to kill everything, or kill as many things as I can, as quick as I can. Uh, it's all about the amount of things that you kill. I believe this is actually the last dungeon I will do on the run, if I remember correctly. So I won't have to do any more of these after this. See what happens? This four mag is brutal. It's so it's such a small mag. Unfortunately, DPS with swap reloading is also dictated to how big the mag is. So you don't have to swap as often. That's another reason why the weapon I'm going to go get later is really good, because it lets you have a bigger mag size than it's actually listed on the item card. Somewhat. No, wait, I have to do one more dungeon. I lied. There is one more dungeon. Alright, good spawns. No, one spawn down here. Oh, a bunch of stuff spawned down here. Okay. Okay. 
That's probably gonna be everything that spawns over here, so I'm gonna have to go hunting for everything else. Yeah, everything else is in the back. Where'd you go? So here is similar to the other dungeon we did before the uh, giant ancient meteor or the cheese curl. Uh, I have to wait for a badass to spawn, and then once I kill that one, we'll be moving on. Alright, so the encounter's clear. I set the lookout for where he spawns. I think he spawned up there. He spawned down here. More dialogue skipping. With a heart full of fire and dreams of dragons and magic, it will end only. And while I have the time, I'm gonna go ahead and put on Ghost Blade. One way with the ultimate defeat of all evil. My alchemy is the strongest the in all the last How did you get away with that dialogue? That's lame. With a heart full of fire and dreams of dragons. And right, give magic. me the potion. It will end only one There we go, and then we can the go into this defeat. map. I can find the angle. There we go. Alright, so we're going to reset up the infinite from the shadows here before we start this map. Uh, where's the, where's the trigger? That should work. I heard the sound. That should work. So here's actually... This, this, so we're going to be somewhat an interesting character. Bones Three Woods actually an interesting character. He's got a, he's got a fun little story that you can dig into with a couple side quests. Uh, I'd say he's probably one of the better characters. I completely missed what brand that was. Okay, no better pistol. So for here, we just have to get to. Bones for another cutscene real quick, and then we can progress to the next sections of the map. Uh, I'm gonna make sure my journal entry is ready to go, or my scroll. And similar thing here, there's a cutscene, so we can just activate in this to also get it. Oh, but he's not just any the fate, maker, the fate Maker's journey begins as so many. Alright, hi Bones. And now we're just gonna wait here for the gate to move, and then we can keep going. So using scroll skipping and um, photo mode dialogue skipping at the same time to skip this dialogue. With a heart full of fire and dreams of dragons and magic. It will end only one way with the ultimate defeat of all evil. There's actually like one neat movement trick in here that we can we can share. So normally you have to go around into each individual section to grab all the poly pieces. But you can grab this one here, and then when you turn around, you can jump on this cannon, and then you can grab mantle on this to skip having to go around. Small little movement trick. And we're going to go grab the last piece, and then go fight uh, Moby Dick, or Mobley Dick. Same thing. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many... With a heart full of fire and dreams of dragons and magic. Oh, yeah. This mag size is rough. I don't think I said that enough. Want that one. I want to make sure this dialogue is playing the whole time because there's a bunch of long lines that can uh, insert themselves at any point here, so I want to make sure that there's always something playing in the background while I'm fighting enemies. Alright, cool. Got that. And then we'll move to the next area. So, we'll photo mode this one, since we're going to be standing in the same place. Um, I can also do a neat trick. If you exit photo mode, and then you press E while your camera is backing away from things, you can actually interact with stuff. As photo mode uh, moves your actual camera, like your player camera, not just like a different camera. So if you exit out of that, the game will let you interact with anything close to that camera. So, unfortunately, here is, uh, this dialogue is also weird and has priority issues, so we can't just, like, spam through it. We have to just sort of wait for all this to go through. With a heart full of fire 
and dreams of dragons. He's, he's, he's still talking in the background, even though I have the scroll playing. With the ultimate defeat. But it's good to have it playing the whole time. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many do. Alright, so break his mug. Then I'm gonna photo mode here until these insults show up. Once these insults show up, I wanna pick I think this one on the right. And dreams of dragons. And then the play this again. I oh, also, yeah, yeah, that's so the first mate. Do. With a heart full of yeah, there's a ping system in this game. I forgot about that. Dragons and magic. It will end only one way. With the ultimate defeat. Yeah. Now he's dead. We can move on. The fate maker's journey begins as so many do. With a heart full of fire and dreams of dragons and magic. It will end only one way. With the ultimate defeat. All right. So I haven't. I'm just gonna just try this on the fly. This should work. I know in general how this movement works. Climb this, uh, climb, is it this, and then, oh, please, let me climb this. Can I climb this one? This, which one do you climb? I'm trying to save, like, two seconds for, like, no reason. This looks so cool to do it this way, so I'm gonna do it. No! Alright, never mind. <laughs> I should've, I should've tried that earlier, but oh well. I forget, I, I don't know how the, uh, how big the actual coral is there that you can stand on. But instead of doing all this, you can just do the coral stuff. But I'm just take the elevator instead. Alright, so another fight. We're just kind of moving to, like, point to point here. Uh, there's a lot of... I want to call them wave fights, but, like, a lot of hurry up and wait sections in this map in particular. So you have to go here, and then you have to do a thing, and then hurry up and wait. Go here, do a thing, hurry up and wait. So here, I'm gonna wait till Valentine talks, and then we'll skip his dialogue. Once Valentine talks, I can uh, play more dialogue and attempt to skip it. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many do. The popper must be dropped. The heart of fire. All right, and then she, the robot, insists herself again to talk. Thank you. And now we can do the fight. With a heart full of fire. And dreams of dragons and magic. It will end Again, a lot of a lot of hurry up and wait here, unfortunately. Defeat of all evil. Oh my god, this pistol's accuracy is also really bad. <laughs> I just noticed it's fifty-seven percent. That's really bad. Dude, that means you're hitting like over half of the time. That's so good. That's definitely how that works. Yeah. Oh, even I have aim assist turn on or turned on, which means every time I aim down sight, if I aim near an enemy, it's going to drag the crosshair closer to them. Uh, even with that aim assist, it's still going to probably miss. You're saying you got an aim bot? Uh, definitely hey. what I meant to say. Also, the, yeah, that's the name of your show. Hey. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many do. Yeah, just as a uh, reminder, this Cabin is. Cabin Boy is so small. This is the last Tuesday night for the show, and I really appreciate the uh, the Borderlands crew coming on and showing out. Uh, I will be switching to Wednesday nights right before Speedruns in the Crypt after this. So uh, if you want to keep catching him up, check it out then. It brought me down to the depths of what used to be the ocean. Hell yes. Pirate backstory. That is definitely a line Andy Sandberg would say. I was the fiercest pirate captain on the buttery seas. I had a fight. Come on, give me something useful. All right, so now we're also... I should also mention, because now I'm going to start looking for it in this map. Um, I'm looking for Torg pistols that have a dynamite attachment and a, and a, a damage thing on them. Uh, because with swap roading, they're also very broken. Which I'll show those off if I get one. Well, actually, I will farm one out. It's worth it. Alright, so here we're going to wait for Polly to open the door. But I'm looking for another weapon sort of casually right now. Uh, there will be a point where I will actually spend some time to hopefully get it. But it won't be a big deal if I miss it. Um, time to play some other dialogue. Let's switch it up a little bit. What once felt so sure is now I didn't know I was lost. Where'd I go? Still, 
one truth remains standing amidst the wreckage. The forces of evil must All right, so now we're waiting here for this fight to start. And there we go. What once felt so sure is now fragile and broken. And where did you spawn? You spawned up here. One truth remains standing amidst the wreckage. Uh, you haven't jumped down yet. Must be stopped. Uh, you. Paint makers lost. What once felt so sure is now fragile and broken. Still. Uh, that was a dark magic barrel. That's not good. The force. I think I might be fine though. Must be yeah, I'm fine. Stopped. The fate maker stops at nothing. Right. So we're building the ship back up just for it to fly away. And yes, we're having the pirate ship fly away. Don't worry about it. Felt so sure. All right, so obviously, come on, let me grab the flag. Still, and one truth remains standing against the wreckage. Now we're gonna grab whatever this is. Must the, be stopped. Uh, there's no term for this. I just don't know what it is. The fate maker stops at nothing. Those shadows. The masthead? Is that what it's called? I don't. Someone knows pirate terminology. I don't. Uh, all I know is larboard and starboard, and that's because I play Final Fantasy fourteen and I don't even know those correctly. <laughs> So, yes, larboard and starboard are definitely sides of the ship. Yep, I think <laughs> they're actually sides of a robot that a laser comes out of. But you know. <laughs> uh, anyway, time for um, a phrase that I never thought I would ever say in my life: um, the gay skeleton pirate sea shanty. But you can't hear it. Uh, why? Oh, because you're dialogue skipping. No, because I'm muffled from, from infinite from the shadows. Ray can probably bump this up. I'll try not to shoot and stuff. This is the this is the backstory of Bones Three Wood. Whatever. I'll take the dialogue loss for that. <laughs> for that. So many Works all the time. With a heart full of no shortage of wayward souls. Normally, I would dialogue skip my way through most of that, so I can skip this line in particular. But you know, gotta listen to the. Defeat of all. Again, just what a phrase. The gay skeleton pirate sea shanty. So true. So true. Fire and dreams of dragons and magic. It will end only. So we're gonna keep moving our way towards the to the boss fight, which unfortunately is Bones' boyfriend. A boyfriend, husband, I don't I don't actually know the status. I'm just gonna say boyfriend. To be safe. Every step reveals another The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many do. With a heart full of fire. There you go, that should blow it up. And now we can move forward. Please, good weapons. With the ultimate defeat of all Okay, no good weapons, fortunately. All right, and the fate makes it be lost again. Is lost. What once felt so sure is now fragile and broken. Still, one truth remains standing amidst the wreckage. The forces of evil must be stopped. So here we're gonna kill. Uh, we're gonna kill the chances crew, and then we're gonna kill the chance, and then we'll be out of here. Which unfortunately, so this is this is one of the downsides of this glitch. Uh, so like, so like I said, nothing aggro is on me, which means for the most part, I'm pretty safe. The problem is, with fights like this, I have to just sit there running around like a chicken with my head cut off, trying to find everything because nothing pings on the radar because nothing's aggroed. So it's really fun to play hide and seek of the enemies that are just walking around trying to find me. Yeah, is it like ever possible for them to like phase out of the map it will end only one way. uh you mean like despawn or something yeah just like walk out of yeah, out of collision or something like that 
Uh, no. They shouldn't do that. Alright, so Lachance has been um, brought to his knees, and now they're gonna make up, and they're like happy again and stuff. Happy Pride, y'all. Shout out to the gay skeleton pirates. Oh, what was that? That was a blue. Oh, that was... Wait, I thought I saw Torg. Am I wrong? Uh, none of those are good. Yeah, none of those are good. The fate maker is lost. Yep, none of those are good. All right. All right, we're gonna take a detour to go walk the dog. Still, I was hoping to skip this, but unfortunately, it's not how it works sometimes. So, we're gonna go get a gun called the Pookie Pistol, the Pookie's Chew Toy. Um, it is a guaranteed masher black powder pistol, which a masher just means it's a pistol shotgun. Um, it's guaranteed uh, if you go do a certain side quest, and if your gear is bad, I meant to accept that. Whoops. And if your gear is bad, you can go get this, but, you know, I was hoping to have decent enough gear to skip it, but it is worth it with this particular case to go get it. So, we're gonna go walk, we're gonna go take a dog for a walk. So, Shark, your, uh, your bullying earlier of chat did work. They are now reminding you to spend your skill points. Oh, thanks, thanks, chat. Appreciate it. Alright, uh... <laughs> oh, it's only one point, so I appreciate it. You guys really kept up with that one. Thanks, chat. Alright, uh... <laughs> that is dumb. I hate this game. I might actually go skip Pookie with this pistol now. Where'd it go? It went to the fourth slot. That's what I did. I'm skipping it. Sorry. I think Deceptics is still watching. Sorry, I'm skipping Pookie because I just got this out of the vendor. Perfect. <laughs> what the... Uh, I hate. This is Wonderlands in a nutshell. Oh, uh, that is dumb. This this does more damage than Pookie would ever do. Um, okay, I have everything right. Just making sure my stuff is set up correctly. It's also not a crossbow, which means I can shoot stuff at a distance uh, with no bullet travel time. Demand people want to go. People want to go walk the dog. We can go walk the dog. <laughs> all right, I, all right. When I enter the max, if Chad really wants it, I will take a six-minute penalty and go walk the dog. If that's what Chad really wants, I will take six minutes to go walk the dog. I mean, okay, like what? What pace are you? Do you think you're on right now? Uh, I will easily finish with the next minute. Not even, not even worried. All right, it's up to you. With this, with this pistol, not even worried. Okay, it, that it's that it's up to you, my man. You are well. Put a poll in chat. Put a poll in chat. Oh, true. Do I, do, I, do I walk the dog or do I skip the dog? Hey, chat. How do you do polls? I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Tech's got it. I like ironically don't actually know. So, like, look how fat. this pistol is. One hundred and nineteen damage, but I'm critting for over three hundred. This is this is silly. This is absurd. I can't believe I got it's after I had took the minute to go get it. <laughs> Everyone's just typing one. <laughs> all right, where? Oh, you're spawning over here. Yeah, Jolt's Jolt you started a. Uh, <laughs> Jolt's press press one to walk the dog. Thanks, Jolt's. Appreciate it. <laughs> Looks like I'm probably gonna walk the dog. Uh, there you are. Oh. I have no idea how they're aggroed on me, but they are, so... Was there actually a poll started? I yeah, didn't see there, the hype there train. Was, there was a poll. <laughs> I, see hype, I see hype train, not the poll. Uh, <laughs> so, Walk the Dog has pretty definitively won with uh, 69% or 69 okay. of the vote. Okay, I will. I will. Sixty-nine percent. Nine percent. Okay. I had to say it just for you. Yeah. Nice. Appreciate it. Uh, this. Oh, come on. Menus. The, fate maker's journey the menus on this are also not nice. I'm gonna see if I can snag this early. If I get myself in the right spot, I sometimes get a prompt to pick this up like that. Saves a few seconds. 
All right, I will take a detour and I'll go walk the dog. <laughs> I just want to hit this fast travel before I go to make sure I can come back here. Like this. Uh, oh, nope. Uh, at this, I want to go here. Oh, cool, this map's broken. I can't... Uh, I have to go back in because I can't select the fast travel spot. There we go. All right, we're going to go walk the dog. I'm gonna walk. We're gonna walk the dog. We do, we do this time loss for you, chat. This is hardly a PB attempt. Oh, by the way, before chat reminds me, I spent my skill point. I'm so proud of you. Uh, this and then. The Fate Maker's journey right. begins. Go walk the dog. Do, with a heart full of fire and dreams of dragons and magic, it will end only one way: with the ultimate defeat. Oh, that's right. I should be invisible. There we go. Um, I guess while, while I, I get to walking the dog, I should mention why I picked Berserker. So while you're in your ultimate or whatever it is, you have this buff called Enrage. Um, feel free to correct me, chat, if I'm slightly wrong here. I'm rusty on this part, but while you're in Enrage, you, ha you do bonus damage, um, bonus cryo damage based on the damage you deal. And it's like a small percentage, but it's like 5 or 10%. Or something like that. Uh, but you can also increase that cryo damage to be even higher. It's just literally a small increase that lets you keep uh, just dealing, like stacking damage to what you're already doing. And luckily enough, I said that like we're fighting skeletons and zombies a lot, and skeletons are weak to cryo, so it makes sense to go ahead and just grab this for free damage. Oh yeah, I might have slightly lied. Pookie's a shark, not a dog. But for this circumstance, he's a dog. All right. Oh, I've got a pet Pookie now. All right, I pet the dog. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many do. I love you too, Pookie. With a heart full of fire and dreams of All right, let's go. Let's go for a walk. It will end only one way, with the ultimate defeat of all evil. You'll need to do his. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many. Got to skip the dialogue. With a heart full of fire and dreams. Of dragons and magic. Uh, where it there is. Only one way. So this is Pookie's area, so we have to defend area so Pookie can uh, do his business quietly and safely. The Fate Maker's journey begins as What's so left? Do, oh, you. With a heart full of fire. Alright, so Pookie, go do your business. Magic. Will... Yes, we're literally waiting for a dog to poop. Don't worry about it. Or a shark to poop. There it is. All right, give me the poop. Thank you. And uh, just for you, chat, I'll be nice and uh, I'll, I'll pick up his favorite ball. And when the time comes, there you go. You can have your ball. You can throw the ball into the fire if you want to, but I chose not to because I know chat would be mad at me. So. With a heart full of All right, off to the uh, after the shark park dragons, magic. or crab we'll park, whatever. Only one way with you. All right. So I'm just gonna photo mode wait here for Pookie because Pookie is slow. Just kind of waiting. Pookie is a Pookie is a slow boy or slow dog or slow shark, whatever. I don't know, man. Oh, you know, now everyone's laughing at Pookie. There you go. I'll pet, I'll pet the dog. Pet the dog. Magic. It will end only one way. With the ultimate defeat of all evil. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many do. So I was waiting for these guys. These guys were talking through the priority thing that we're doing, the dialogue skipping. They talked through it for some reason. Um, so we're just gonna kind of wait for them to start talking, and then, unfortunately, we have to we have to kill them all. There wouldn't be a Borderlands game if it wasn't for that. Alright, also, um, this is the dog. Good dog. Where is... Where, where'd you go? Alright. Come on, accuracy. Work with me here. 
The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many do. All right. With a heart Hi, Pookie. Of fire. Good boy. Dreams of dragons. All right, let's take you home. Let's finish the walk. End only one way. I'm so glad Ozzy doesn't hear me saying that word and like is, you know, wagging his tail the Fate like Maker's journey vigorously behind so me. With a heart full of fire and dreams of dragons. All right. Hi, magic. Pookie. All right, we're gonna make you a uh, big boy, and then unfortunately, uh, I, uh, I have to be mean. Sorry, chat. I have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to shoot him a little bit, and then get this collar off him. Come on, work with me here. Work with me. Come on, collar. Come off. There we go. All right, give me this collar. Oh, I just pet the dog. Yeah, sorry, Pookie. We had a fight, but you're good. We're good. Alright. There we go. There's the there's the Pookie pistol. I'll even use it for you, chat. Even though it's technically worse than what I have, but I will I will use it. Was that right. actually six minutes? I it, it felt like five. It was, that's, that's it was like I'm five saying. or six minutes. It's like five or six minutes okay. to go sure. to go get that. But now I have a so this is this is the master pistol. We see the times five on it. This is a shotgun pistol, so it does a lot of damage. It does a hundred damage. So like if you don't have a gun that does a hundred damage, you can just take a second to uh, go grab this. The thing it also that's great about this gun is that its hidden effect. Um, it's also a black powder gun. So first of all, second of all, the hidden effect on it is if you hit a crit, uh, there's a chance the bullet gets refunded for free, which is kind of neat. Oh my god. So that's one way that this gun becomes better than everything else because you can keep shooting uh, and you get extra ammo just for free for hitting a crit. Which I hit crits all of the time thanks to, thanks to Infinite from the Shadows. I forgot to uh, play that dialogue. With a heart full of fire. So we're going to basically make a giant circle around this map. They love making you traverse the whole map to go do objectives. Come on, keep sliding. And we're going to get lost again. You memorize this one yet, Amy? What once was so fragile? Nope. The forces of evil must be Ah, uh, come on. The fate maker walks the land, trying to bend. Not this one. This one's this one's an accident. I didn't mean to play this one. Reveals another lost hope. The task. We sliding down the hill. But a hero must keep moving forward. All right, just to make sure this dialogue playing uh, plays, I'm gonna just reset it there. And so yeah, you can see like how fast things die with this pistol, which is why you will go out of your way to get it. Maker's journey begins as so many do, with a heart full of fire and dreams of dragons and magic. It will end only one way, with the ultimate. And now we fight. Of all evil. I know these enemy names. They're they are relevant to the story, but they look weird out of context. I should also mention the Pookie pistol shoots really fast as well. Like 12 12.0 is. A very fast fire rate for black powder pistols as well. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many do, with right, a heart cool. full of fire and dreams of dragons and magic. Pick up a magical fish. End only one way with the ultimate defeat of all. The Fate Maker's the Fate Maker's journey begins one. as so many. With a heart full of fire and dreams of dragon. All right, so this is actually a soft lock. I am avoiding by not moving forward here. Uh, if you leave this platform too fast, you can soft lock this fire spirit. It will end only so once the objective change, you're free to leave. That is actually uh, something painful I've learned the hard way. The fate maker is lost. 
once felt so sure is now fragile. So unfortunately, it doesn't look like I found a torque pistol yet, which means the next boss coming up will be a little annoying to fight. The forces of evil must be. Why did that? How did that open early? Huh? Is lost. Uh. Once felt so sure is now. Uh. Okay. I did. I just accidentally do something. I. That is gonna be. Uh, looked at later. I don't know how I did that. Must be stopped. Look, I appreciate how Normally you have to wait for the fire spirit to break the door. For some reason the door exploded. He's gaming, dude. I'm not sure if... Uh, that face when you accidentally possibly discovered a skip on Hotfix? I'm sure if Deceptix is watching, he's probably frantically taking notes. Oh, sure. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure he is. Because we, uh, we both know Deceptics loves this run. It's his favorite run. Favorite run. Maybe that was known, and I'm just... I missed that. You just see, like, how fast things get destroyed by this pistol. So, like, the fact that it's at least guaranteed makes this a somewhat... A uh, safer run compared to like BL2, where everything is random of what you get. Alright, we talked to Kassar, and just like Roland and BL2, we're just gonna leave so that way she stays alive. You didn't really need to kill her all. Yes, I did, because you made me. And now I have to throw out this whole story I had ready. Alright, so unfortunately, changing maps uh, causes your action skill to reset. So I need to wait now for it to come back before I can reuse it. Uh, I don't have a Torg pistol, so we're just gonna wait. We're just gonna use Pookie pistol and just I'm gonna say suffer, but it'll be a, a longer kill than using a Torg pistol. So I'm gonna jump in here at this time here and activate from the shadows in the middle of the cutscene. And everyone say hi to Daryl. This is this is Daryl. Did I not reload that correctly? I didn't. All right. So this is the boss fight. Alright, so that's phase one. This boss has three phases. Uh, ignore the two Daryls. Also, he's a long boy. He's very long. I'm not getting a good chain on these. Swap reloads. Alright, just to make sure this dialogue line gets skipped, I'm gonna replay it. With a heart full of fire and dreams of dragons and magic. It will end only uh, someone in chat has to, how a tour gun help. Um, imagine me killing a boss in three seconds. That's how it would help. I should say three seconds to when I start dealing damage to when I end dealing damage uh, is how long it would take for him to die. It would take a little bit of time to set it up, but the bosses will die faster if I have a torque pistol. Maker's lost, by the way. All right, Daryl's dead. Oh, another legendary. One truth remains standing amidst the wreckage. That's. I think that's four now. Must be stopped. The faint maker is lost. What once felt so sure is now fragile and broken. The faint maker begins to wonder. With the world torn in two, can balance ever be restored? And we're gonna move on to probably the worst map in the in the run, uh, because of one particular one particular fight that happens right at the start of the level, and it is a byproduct of us using um, the infinite from the shadows glitch. So hopefully it's not too bad, but we'll see how uh, how rough it is. And by rough, I mean it just takes a while. It's not hard, it's just going to take a lot of time.
Uh, I'm trying to think. Do I want to? F uh, do I want to do it now? I think I want to. So you're sticking with her in this pathetic quest, are you? Fine. That might work. I know what it's like to have your fate chosen for you. But I'm That's a, this no. We'll okay. we'll move. We'll ignore it. You know? All right. I'm gonna look forward toward the pistol, but so don't know if I want to farm again, honestly. All right, so we're gonna do some more photo mode skipping here. Touch this thing, then we're gonna wait for the Waster to spawn, and then I need to wait so I can talk to him. And we're gonna wait for this thing to open. So again, just like hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, and that's gonna happen in a lot of places here. Thought it was done with that. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many do, with a heart full of fire and dreams of dragons and magic. It will end only. Well, uh, I would say, um, if you have any more random trivia or uh, things you want to talk about, Amy, this would be a great time to do it because it's gonna be about like three to four minutes of um, Waiting for him to do stuff and then the fight that takes forever. Sure. Um, I can I can throw out a couple of announcements here. Um, Go for it. If you uh, missed SGDQ or 2023 or our Juneteenth celebration that was last weekend. Um, sorry, my wife is chasing the dog through the house right now. So you're going to hear some stampeding <laughs> behind me. There you go. Uh, be sure to check out the VODs on YouTube.com slash Games Done Quick. And... Uh, just a reminder that your subs, Prime Gaming subs, Gift subs, and Bits Cheered on this channel help support the hotfix and the content that we produce throughout the year. Uh, so if you really like what we're doing here and you want to consider supporting us, uh, please consider subscribing if you uh, really like what we're doing here. I, uh, I I can say I personally really enjoy, like, I, I kind of applied to hotfix, like, a as a, just to see if it was possible, because I, I wanted to you know, showcase some more FPSs and, and new things that I, back a few years ago, I didn't feel like got showcased enough or as often. Um, and GDQ took a chance on the show and I really like doing this a lot. This has been genuinely one of my favorite things to do is just to uh, find new runs, um, find old runs, hang out with my friends, produce content. And uh, yeah. It's uh, been a lot of fun, so, you know, thank you everyone for watching, and uh, you know, keep keep watching. Is that, is that, did I vamp long enough, or do you need me to do anything more? Uh, you, you, you have like another minute and a half. Uh, hmm. Or, or I can, you know, I can make up things, because uh, right now we're just, uh, uh, yeah. I cleared this area, and it's this fight that's about to happen here that's the prob problematic one, because wyverns spawn um, in the air over here and like all around here, and because they don't track me, I have to shoot them from a distance like this, and uh, that's where it becomes a problem. So like they just they can just kind of fly away like this, just and that's becomes annoying. You can just start making up facts. Um, no one can correct you. Oh, it's, what is this like the um, thing? Fast show at SGDQ. Listen, that show was perfect. I don't want to hear any any doubts about that. It was not a uh, it was not a dig at that. It was just a a for example kind of thing. Let's see. Um, Where's the dervish? I'm looking for... There you go. This is the big guy. So this is the one that causes problems. But he's also so far away. Let's see. What's uh, what's your favorite Borderlands game to play casually? Two. Two? Yes. Two. Yeah, it's, uh, it's classic. It is just like the Borderlands game that you play with your friends. Oh, that's that's a lot of ammo. I'm actually gonna go ahead and just swap back to this one. What uh, what class though, or what character? Honestly, whatever I'm feeling in the moment. Um, Maya's typically a good go-to because she's easy to understand. She has an easy action skill. Her skill trees are easy to understand. You don't have to do that much to them to like make them powerful. 
Um, and I'm not just talking like cloud kill. Um, also, I'm done with the annoying fight. We can go back to the Pookie pistol. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many do. Uh, I would say, yeah, like, BL2 and then probably Maya most of the time. Maybe Zero if I'm feeling something a little different. Maybe Melee Zero, but I know Melee Zero isn't that great until you get to endgame. Two just nailed the formula so well. Alright, I'm gonna photo mode here while I wait for things to spawn. I forgot to unpause. There you go. No, oh, I, I know you picked it just to uh, just to appreciate the fans, but let's let's talk about the real best uh, Borderlands game, TPS. I mean, TPS has the best DLC in any of the Borderlands games, <laughs> that, though. That's like, so true. <laughs> like, yeah, it, actually, that's, that's the, the next the question: is best DLC in Borderlands? Because there's so many. Yeah, Claptastic is so good. Like, Claptastic is the best DLC in the game. Yeah. I will firmly stand by that. With a heart full of fire and dreams. Dragons. It's just like it introduced a new rarity that had multiple like fun aspects to it. It wasn't just like, oh, it's pearls. So it's just a new gun type. But like glitch rarity was cool because it had its own neat effects to them. Uh, the DLC itself was really good. Yeah, I, I, the boss fight is probably annoying, but like the areas were cool, even not just in a nostalgic way, but like they were just fun to play through. Yeah, I, like, I think is, the I think the like. Um, Holodome or whatever was that? Was that part of Claptastic or was that a different one? Uh, Holodome was. I liked it. I know a lot of people didn't, but I thought it was a cool setting for um, an arena. Yeah, just a very mid slaughter fest or circle slaughter, so basically. Should, yeah. Just just to, just to mention before we start reminiscing on like our favorite Borderlands games, um, I'm basically just running to the end of this particular section of the map to go pick up a thing, and that's all I'm doing here. But, like this is one reason why. Again, this is probably the the worst map in the run because it's just. Go here, do a really annoying long fight, and then go here and go pick up a thing. And that's it. That's the whole map. Yeah, uh, uh, there was Holodome, and then there was the other one, Shock Drop Slaughter Pit, I think. Yeah, which was, was just one. another circle of slaughter, I think. But the announcer in that map was so good. Yeah, that's true. Whatever his name was. Someone in chat's asking... Uh... How is how is multiplayer differ than solo for Borderlands? So like in a speedrun context, obviously you're a lot faster because you have t now you have two people doing the same thing, and you can split up and do objectives. Um, in a casual context, it's actually pretty interesting because you can get a lot of different like build variety in your game. Still, yeah, you can come up with an eight team composition in multiplayer. Yeah. And I'll, I'll actually be the hater and say the second best, uh, the second best DLC is probably um, Scarlet. Oh. Captain Scarlet is the second best. Yeah. I like Scarlet. Has a, it has a really good gun. Um, it has a couple really good guns. Uh, I really like the sand driving. The boats. Yeah. I thought it was at least an interesting way to like. Change up the formula. Alright, so I'm photo mode waiting for things to play in the background. Second best DLC. I think that's that's probably the harder question. Yeah. I think Claptastic is an easy yeah. first choice. Cla but yeah, Claptastic wins second best. Wins easy. Uh, Second best DLC ever. I, I, I am a hater. I am not a Tiny Tina DLC enjoyer. I think that DLC is actually very bad. <laughs> like, the story in it, fine, whatever. I think the gameplay of it is really bad. <laughs> I'd say the um, General Nox are hilarious enough clap, um, whatever that one's called, the other Claptrap one. MBL 1's also pretty good. This, you mean Zombie Island of Dr. Ned, or do you mean something else? The clap trap robo revolution. Oh yeah, the revolution. Uh, revolution. That one was okay. I think uh, I'd actually go for General Knox. There is a, a route I could do here where I could jump down, and there's a jump pad to put me back up. I just forget where the jump pad is. But I just wanted to mention that there is a faster way. Why are you talking, Tina? Thank you. Dang.
Yeah, because like that jump pad turns on the same time this one does, so you can save a few seconds uh, jumping there. I just forget where the jump pad is. Oh, it's right there. That's where it is. Alright, so the fun fact about this elevator, um, if you're not dialogue skipping, this one goes slower. But if you're dialogue skipping, it goes faster. It's just, I, I don't know. It's just how it works. Alright, can I get a Torg Pistol here? I will farm one in the next area, though. I will try to farm for one, because it is very helpful on Nightmare and Dragon Lord. Alright, looks like we're farming in the next map, unfortunately. What once felt so sure is now fresh. I don't think I picked one up. Let me check. Uh, no, I have not picked one up. Cool. Wait, how close is this to the end of the run? Because I've definitely played to at least here in my casual playthrough. Um, it is. Well, I have an entire two maps to go and uh, two boss fights, including this one. Huh, okay, so I made it pretty close to the end. <laughs> I just didn't play the rest. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, you didn't. So I'm waiting for him to spawn here, and once he uh, does the slam, I can start to fight him. One truth remains like the slam here, and then we just... The forces of because he doesn't track to us, we can just do this. Just following him around, just shooting him in the back of the head. Yep. It's just, uh, this is just how boss fights go, at least in, at least for this one. Um, the next boss will be slightly more chaotic that I have to deal with. And lucky enough, because he goes through all three forms where he has a shield and, um, health, then bone, I guess. Um, and because I do bonus cryo damage, like, this form goes even faster. Alright, so we're gonna skip some dialogue here. Uh, last, or, uh, is this body die? Or must it be destroyed? And, okay, no good loot. Okay. So. Why did you talk? That's rude. The Alright, so we're gonna wait here until Blaster does his dance. And once he starts dancing, we're gonna save quit. So that'll skip a bunch of other small stuff that we can so that we can just keep moving faster. All right, right there. So now we can quit. So skips animation, skips dialogue. Might as well just do it while we're waiting for nothing. All right, and I'll go ahead and check this again. That's that's so rude. Actually, twenty-one thousand. I'll buy that. Just in case I run out of ammo. That was a shotgun. Yeah, just in case I have ammo problems, I will buy it. Uh, Alright, well, let's keep moving forward. And yes, this does mean I lost infinite from the shadows, but I'm not going to worry about that because I am going to form a Torg pistol anyway, so I will set that back up when we get to the next map. Alright, so we're just gonna do a bunch of photo mode dialogue skip waiting here. The forces of evil. Alright. So I gave him permission to curse me, so he's gonna curse me so I can then use these purple runes. But now it's just more waiting. Again, hurry up and wait. So I'm gonna wait till this thing sparkles a little bit. And once this thing sparkles, I can touch it. That and we can leave. That way will take you across the desert. You'll find the dragon lord spirit in the center of a dead city known as Oscar. And cool, we're out of the worst map in the game. Or in the in the run. I shouldn't say in the game. In the run. The parched way stretch out before you. You can feel the And we can start heading to Necropolis. Which is the last like big map. I that's interesting that that happened. I'm not sure why that was delayed. I'm gonna license my face on so many lunch boxes. And I will take hmm. Like I could just finish the run with the Pookie pistol and it's fine, but like it is significantly slower, so 
I'm gonna go ahead and take a few minutes here to try to get a pistol. Uh, so. One thing that's also fun is pausing the menu puts your cursor in a... I don't know what the rule is of where the cursor ends up on the screen when you pause, but it ends up in a weird spot, so like it's, I have to find my cursor every time I pause and then put it in the right spot. The said the <laughs> is surrounded by a city of the dead. Oh, hey, look. We'll have to find <laughs> <a> way in. <laughs> that does five more damage than the one I have. All right, well, uh... Oh, uh, no, I want that. Uh, hold up. I want that peg leg. I forgot to equip it. All right, I think I can sell everything else. I did not expect to find a new Pookie pistol in the vending machine. That's funny. That works out, though, because that means this does more damage than the purple pistol I found earlier. So, my purple pistol is now... Less is now less valuable. Uh, oh, that was a Torg rifle, I think? I should look at things faster. There's a shotgun. Shotguns can also work, but dynamite pistols are just so good. They're if I get I hope I can get one so you can all understand why they're so absurd, but uh, like I said, I'll give it like two minutes, three minutes, and if I don't get one, we'll just have to move on. It's just unfortunately the nature of this. And no torque. Now, fun fact, that only showed up because I did the previous quest. If we didn't walk the dog, that wouldn't have been there. It's true. You wasted enough time. I should say that, like in game time, this actually doesn't lose a this doesn't lose too much time. Um, checking a vendor is like five to seven seconds per time you do it if you're quick about it. So it's like it's like ten seconds every time you check a vendor for stuff because um, this game is timed with in game time because of how long some of these load screens are. And you can imagine PC to PC or even console to console like this would change dramatically. Uh, that's a shotgun. Uh, no, that's not what I want. So I found something close that I was looking for, but it wasn't good enough for me to take it. It was a dynamite pistol with melee damage accessory, and it was only one dynamite. I'm looking for two dynamite at a minimum, and if it has the damage accessory on it, even better. So that just means it's going to die even faster. That was a or shotgun. Nope, I don't want photo mode. Anyway, more trivia. <laughs> <laughs> if you still have it up. Uh, ooh, give me a second, I can pull it back up. Did you not come prepared to waste uh, a minute of dead air? <laughs> Shoot. Uh, it's going to take me too long. You don't have this on speed dial? No. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Uh... Uh, all right, so I'm going to hit you with this one. Um, I, I will point out, I, I remember that this was Unjust and Decep answering these questions, and they got this one right. Okay. All right. Uh, who besides Mobley drops the Veruk? I know this. I should know this, I should say. Um... I can picture what they look like, I, th I think. Or I should say, I know that there's another enemy. I just don't know who it is. Well, yeah, I told you there's Ooh. another enemy. Oh, and... It's... Ooh. Who is... It's in the main game, right? No, this is a DLC. I'll give you that, it's in a give DLC. that for free. It, it's in a DLC, yeah. and they drop it. Hey, 
That is ooh, bad. All right, I'll do two more of these and then we'll just move if I don't have it. Um, it's in a DLC. Yeah. So what's it? It's not in Torg. It's not in Tina. It would have to be Scarlet or... Um, it's not ham not Hammerlock. Hammerlock is not those guns. All right, looks like I'm not getting the Torg gun, which is fine. I'll go ahead and reveal the answer. It is it's the Sorcerer's Daughter. It is in the Tina DLC, yep. really? Yep. I How imagine not... the only reason Decept knows that is because he did the hunt. That's interesting. That sh that's in her loophole. I just bought a gun I didn't mean to buy. All right. Uh, no torque pistol for us, unfortunately. Uh, but I have a shotgun. But, like, I can try it with a shotgun and see if it works out. Oh, I do need to set up the glitch before I leave. Uh, this ghost blade. Let's see. And, all right. You want one more before we uh, Did, go to hit the end of the run? Uh, you can do one more for now, and then we'll. Um, I'm not. We, we still have like 15 minutes. Um, actually, more well. like 20 minutes. More we're talking about. Um, and I also have a couple wave fights to do. So, so keep the document handy. Okay. Um. um yeah. Do one more. Uh, it, it, this one's this one's a gimme, but it's it's an interesting one to talk about for people who don't know. Um, who is Michael Marmoral, and what is he inspired by? The Fate Maker's uh, Michael Marmoral, uh, as you personally know him as Michael Marmalade, yep. uh, was a fan of Borderlands. I forget what the reason was, but um, reached out or someone reached out to Gearbox. And they put him in the game. Yep. He was, uh, well, okay, so, like, what is he in the game? He is, uh, he's a, a random vendor that spawns in Sanctuary that will just give you a blue rarity weapon. That's right. For free if you talk to him. Yep. Yeah, he's, and he's, he's just a, a random spawn. Oh, I should activate him. He's a uh, fan of Borderlands who passed away, uh, due to something. I, I don't. Pass away from cancer. I have cancer written in my notes. Don't know if that's actually true, but you know. Um, and uh, reached out to Gearbox, and they put him in the game as an NPC. All right. So this is a wave fight. So this is one of the wells. There's going to be four of these that I'm doing. This is the first one. And again, same problem that I had with some of the other areas where things spawn all around the area, but they don't show up on my radar. So it's a lot of like hide and seek of where are they go find them so it'll be like towards the end there'll be like one enemy left and i can't find it and i'll be running around trying to find where it spawned all right hit me actually hit me with another one i still got a, a little bit of time sure. um Let's see. What? Hmm. This one's kind of hard, actually. I don't. I don't know if we'll get this one. Um, I, I admittedly, I don't know this one. Um, what is the name of Moxie's bar in the Dragon Keep DLC? This is the Tina DLC. Oh God! This is. So, it's in my brain somewhere. Can I dig it out though? Oh, I've. Oh, I know. I used to know this. No, I, I've, I've got to pass, unfortunately. It is Moxie's Grog and Girls. Oh, so sure. <laughs> yeah. oh because the, the Grog nozzle. Yep. All right, we, we got one. This is a freebie, and then you can go on talking about the run. You know, the, the important thing that the people are here to see. Um, what are the names of the three midgets strapped to Bad Ma's shield? Uh, Hubert, Dubert, and Lubert. That's right. You know who discovered that and put that video up on YouTube? That was me. That was you. <laughs> I did that. Yeah. I have the I have the first video on it on YouTube at least. Yep. I don't know if I was first to discover it, but first to document it. Yep. There's a uh, there's a video from like ten years ago of you yeah. putting it up on YouTube. Great. Yeah, great great thumbnail by the way. Yeah. No, it's really good. optimal it's, thumbnail. It's very funny. I think it's I think it's very good. One truth remains standing. All right, so I'm gonna wait here because I've had the soft lock happen so many times. Must be stopped. Where he just doesn't actually do his objective, and then I lose two minutes. Thank you. All right, cool. I don't know how I caused that, but if you go here too early, Elder will just teleport backwards, and then you have to save quit to fix it, which is cool and good. 
All right, so the next well. All right, let's uh, let's do the next one. Next, next well. So we uh, we got time for more, <laughs> more trivia. All right, no problem. Uh, let me see. As a wave fight, there's nothing interesting happening here. So sorry, Chad. <laughs> it's just I have to kill everything here. I'm trying to find a, a good one. Uh, who is... I don't know if this is canon or not, so you can't fact check me. Um, Scooter's <laughs> dad. Um, isn't... Isn't it Mick Zafford? Or isn't someone... It's someone in the Zafford clan, right? Or is it the... It's one of the clans, right? It is, it is one of the clans. Uh... It was, is it Hodogs or Zaffrey's? I forget. Uh, it is the Hodogs. I can tell you from this. Is Hodogs a texture? No, and, uh, I don't know, to be it honest. It's one of the clans. Jimbo Hodunk. Oh, it's Jimbo? Yep. Sure. Okay, sure. That's that's correct. You can't fact check that. Yeah, you can't. You can't uh, you're not allowed to fact check me. I don't know if it's right. I will never, uh, will never be fact checked. Uh, want one more? This one's a, this one's a yeah, little go, free uh, because you, can you do, said you played. You can do you. two more. You can do two. All right. Uh, what is Maya's phase lock berserk skill called? The, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, the, Ooh, also good good time to level the, up. The one that makes enemies go berserk. That's the capstone, isn't it? Yeah. Um, nope. I'm, I'm running on empty on that one. Is uh, Where's, there it is. Salt lock. Ah, uh, I was I was gonna say phase shift, but I know that was wrong. Uh, where is there he is? It's like it's like hide and seek. It's like where do these enemies spawn? I have to go find them. And all the true Borderlands fans are like, oh yeah, that was easy. And I'm just like, uh, it's been a it's been a couple of years. Uh, what once felt so I'm showing my age as a Borderlands boomer. Still, one truth remains standing. All right, so we got the the first two wells done, but unfortunately, we're not done with wells. We have one more to do. We have to go open this last well that's in front of the door. Once we open this one. End only one way with the ultimate defeat of all evil. All right, so trigger this one, and then now we can do this last wave fight here. <laughs> all right, all right, you, go for it. I, so I'm gonna ask this question from Joltz. I he's gonna have to give the answer to this one because I don't know this one. <laughs> okay, this is a real uh, if you play Borderlands, you know, if, if you know, you know type question. What's the okay. recharge delay on a double TDR parted V shield? <laughs> Shut up! <man. laughs> I know gun parts, not shield parts. I love you, Jolts. <laughs> oh. Good one, Jolts. <laughs> I am one hundred percent sure that off the dome, Jolts could tell us that. Oh, without without even looking it up, like he could he could tell us that. Dude, there was there was a one thing where he was farming for a perfect sham, and every time he was looking on the ground, he's like, "It's this," and then hovers over the card, and gets it perfectly right. It's like, all right, <laughs> five point oh four delay. Jeez, all right. <laughs> yeah, I guess Tier is what the slowest, right? I don't know. All right, so now we're done with Wells. I'm gonna wait for this to crash through the floor, and then we can go into the catacombs and start heading towards the end of this map as a marble and only one way with the ultimate defeat of all evil this is unfortunately just some small traversal to get to the next small wave fight area and by wave fight i mean the the next one's not really a wave fight it's more of um there's a small section of the arena they want you to fight in and you can just kill those enemies. Can I get this jump? No, I didn't quite get it. All right. 
If you have enough slide or speed off the slide, you can clear both of those spike traps, but I didn't. And here comes the troll hammers. I'm going to wait for them because these love to destroy your shield. I just realized my shield is still 139. I never upgraded that. That's all good. Don't worry about it. Maybe I'll buy one later. So this area has a couple other enemies that we need to kill, but fortunately, we can ignore like 80% of them, and we can just fight things in the back of the room here. And the enemies we need to focus on are these um, Engineer Cyclops. Anything that spawns on this platform is essentially what I'm focusing on killing. Wow, this upgraded Pookie Pistol is making a world of difference. It's amazing what four damage on a masher does. Oh, I didn't have to kill him. Interesting. Well, we have to kill both of those Cyclops, and then you can go up, but no, I, I guess I killed enough things that it just let me through. All right, another vendor. Can we get a Torque Pistol? Answer is no. Uh, also, oh, not this. I want the... Is this the vendor with shields? I forget. Oh, yeah, this is the vendor with shields. Uh... 361? Can, do I not have room? I don't have money. That's the problem. Having money is typically uh, required to buy things in the shop. Alright, so there's actually a long dialogue line that actually starts when you exit that archway right there. So, now that I've skipped it, I can start fighting these three Cyclops in the front of the laser here. The thing is also, I need to make sure it's played in the dialogue line before I kill the third one of these, because... These trigger another really long dialogue line from Tina about exposition of, like, this is a sweet-ass laser that does magic, and then that's actually the objective is, like, fire the sweet-ass laser, or something like that. Uh, Alright, we'll play it now. That should be fine. And... Well, Alright, now we can go hit the... Uh, what did I step on? What dot did I step on? Oh, that sucks. Let's see if I can save this. I am tab firing my scroll wheel to shoot this thing. <laughs> All right, I gotta hide now because my my action skill is down. Because unfortunately, I am super squishy. So if anything hits me, I'm probably dead. I'm gonna hide over here. Doesn't look like there's anything over here. Oh, that's just a zombie. Alright, I can reactivate it now. Cool. The one, the best part about this action skill is if it, you lose it, and then you just reactivate it, you still have infinite from the shadows. So it's like... It is just absurdly powerful. Alright, so... Oh, nope. I want this. Alright, so... Dialogue skip after pressing that one. Which is going to let me activate this one. One truth remains standing amidst the wreckage. And then we can move the on to Nightmare. Which, uh, hilariously enough, I did just get down to get out of the action skill. I'm now going to do that intentionally again. Because so sure uh, if you enter a thing or a cutscene while you have this version of Infinite from the Shadows, it won't let you keep it in between cutscenes. So if I down myself and then re the revive, so I'm out of the action skill, I can then enter the cutscene doing the other version, which is activating it in the middle of the cutscene to also get infinite from the shadows. So, another way to sort of work around that limitation. I guess that's, in my experience, maybe I'm just doing something wrong. But let's check Spender again. Nope. Still nothing. I actually don't think I even have money to buy a gun if I wanted to. Alright. All right, time for Nightmare. Now that I don't have a Torg Pistol, this is going to be a much tougher fight. It's going to take a lot longer. I forgot to activate from the shadows, so this is actually going to suck. Oh, yeah, so now Nightmare's going to be mad and going to try to charge me. How could you 
corrupt something so good and pure, I care about nature! Oh, did Nightmare lose aggro? That's nice. That's actually helpful. Normally, normally she doesn't. So this is only the first phase. I do have one more phase to get through. All right, get out of my way, please. Thank you. All right, so now we've gotten through this phase. Now we're going to get through the whatever this phase is called. The ghostly phase. So I need to be careful here. I need to crouch or jump based on what her action is. So in this case, it looks like I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to... Oh, I didn't want to do that. Let's reset. Why did that not go? Alright. Alright. So the shoes should summon horses here. Cool. So I just got to stay crouched underneath them. Alright, excuse me. Ah, I thought I got the jump. Well, that sucks. Um, let's see if I can get this kill before she teleports away. I might be able to get this. All right, not even close. Don't worry about it. And dies, huh? I, with relief. Ah. Sorry, your majesty. I normally do that fight with a Torg pistol, so it goes much faster. But uh, you know, Pookie pistol still works. All right, so we can grab this scroll, and there's a cutscene here, so we're going to skip that by save quitting. And we're going to move forward. How much money do I have, actually? I have $6,000. If it's a white or green, I can buy it. And the, the game is really testing me with uh, not giving me the stuff I normally use. And we're gonna play some more dialogue lines here. Come on. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many do. Oh, I also need Ghost Blade. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many do. With a heart full of fire. And we're gonna reset up Ghost Blade glitch again here. Or the infant from the shadows. And right there. And now we're on to the tech the, I guess the the last regular map, the, the actual last map is just a boss arena. But this is the last, like, normal map of the run. It's only going to be a few minutes, but it's basically going to be go here, do one fight, and then leave. At the peak of the um, skills, switch this back, and then switch my journal log back over. Really, the game is just really... It really doesn't want me to use the Torque Pistol this run. Oh, uh, so I have skill points to use. Thanks, chat. Um, uh, what is it? Sure, movement speed. Alright, so we're going to make sure we get through some dialogue here because there's some dialogue that really needs to be skipped when you get to this middle crystal. Play it again. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many do, with a heart full of fire and dreams of dragons and magic. Yeah, we're just gonna wait to smack this thing here. Alright, I'm gonna smack him once. So, hilariously enough, uh, when I killed Bones's, or I guess, um, took Bones' boyfriend down to one knee, um, that quest gives you the peg leg, which if you hit stuff, it gives you a movement speed buff. So now that I'm high enough level to equip it, and I have enemies that are going to be like in my path, I'm actually going to smack something if it's on my way, it's just to get a little bit extra movement speed. So like this little zombie gunner guy here, I'm just going to give him a quick little smack, and then keep moving. Alright, RNG bridge. These little electrical things fall randomly onto the bridge. Just got to hope it doesn't like down me in one hit. And we're... We're good. 
touching the pile is fine. It's getting hit by it is the problem. I've never had to check so many vendors before. <laughs> Outside, this whole storm All right, small little uh, movement here to skip walking around. You can get on this fence post, jump onto this bridge, onto this tube thing here, onto this bridge. The Fate Maker wields great power. I didn't want this one. I wanted this one. Cool. And then I'm just going to photo mode this to make sure the dialogue line plays all the way. And we're going to do the same thing when we get here. Once that shows up, I'm going to photo mode here to skip more dialogue, and then I'm going to wait for things to spawn. Once things spawn, then we're good to fight. Now the real question is how many badasses will I get here? Because there's one guaranteed, but more than likely a second one will show up somewhere. And then I can test my shotgun on it. See how good it is for the Dragon Lord fight. Oh, there's one. All right. See how good this is. That's not good. That's not worth using at all. <laughs> So, the thing about Torg weapons is um, they have two firing modes. They have Impact and Sticky. Um, the thing about Sticky mode is if you stack multiple projectiles on a target, the Sticky projectiles do more damage. And that stacks multiplicat multiplicatively. So it's like, hey, this if you, every stuck thing does 20% extra damage. That's 20% times 20% times 20% times 20%. And with swap reloading, you can shoot significantly more projectiles onto an enemy that was intended. Um, which lets you dramatically increase damage of the stuck projectiles. So that's why I was looking for that weapon. Um, the thing that's really broken is um, Torg sticky pistols that have dynamite, uh, because the dynamite is 35% per thing that you stick. And you can also get a damage accessory on top of that, which is also 6% on top of the 35%. So you can really dramatically stack up everything. I'm not sure if the 6%, I'm sure the 6% is multiplicative of the 35% as well, so it's not just like, oh, it's 41% bonus damage. It's a little higher than that. But yeah, so that's why, like, that's why Torg um, sticky pistols are the best thing to kill bosses with, uh, because one, you can get one with 2x projectiles, so you can stick two things of dynamite at the same time, and with swap reloading, you can get like five or six mags off, which is like 10 or 12 dynamite, and it stacks up to be like 700% like like that like instantly. So, unfortunately, no Torg weapon, so this Dragon Lord fight's going to be lengthy. It's not going to be <laughs> undoable or not completable. It's just going to be a little long of a fight. So I'm going to wait a little bit, about here-ish. I'm waiting for my action skill to come back up, so that way when the cutscene's over, I can just use it like immediately. It should be. There you go. Alright, so he's going to teleport to one of the four cardinal directions of the arena, which was over here. And fortunately enough, you're safe if you just stand behind him, so I can just stand behind him and just wail on him. And because now I'm in from infinite from the shadows, now that he's done with the first attack, he just loses all aggro. So I can just keep shooting him until he phases to the, the next fight, or the next phase. This is where I would like to have a torque pistol because this would go significantly faster. But Pookie pistol is also a good. It's probably the best, second best option because of the the crit refunds a bullet, so you don't run out of ammo doing this. I will probably run out of ammo, but there's ammo boxes all around the arena. So I guess a fun little like history fact: before this glitch was found. Um, you had to do this fight without infinite from the shadows. So, 13 levels under with normal guns, or well, I guess with, with this glitch, the, the the swap reloading, you had to kill Dragon Lord. And it was a tough fight. It was actually like one of the hardest runs in Borderlands to do because you didn't have infinite from the shadows, but the moment this was found, instantly became much easier. 
Yeah, I, I remember the the weeks after Wonderland's release, everybody like testing out the various classes to see which one was the best. Oh, that's hi, a that's fun strike. time. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be here for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, so this is the this is all it is. boss fight. Yeah, this is the boss fight if you uh, don't have a torn pistol. So just for reference, uh, the last run I completed, um, RP bead, I didn't have a torn pistol, and it took a little over six minutes to do, um, which is like what this one is. Uh, my PB or my my best time of this fight. Using a 2x torque pistol, properly um, specced with like accessories, was three and a half minutes. Oof. So, yeah, torque pistols are significantly better. And there's even like small things you could get on the torque pistol that would make it even faster. You could get stuff like um, corrosion or something to get rid of the armor on Dragon Lord um, faster. You could get a uh, fire to burn through his health a little faster. You can get the electric one to burn through his shield a little faster. So like you can even get more small optimizations on that torque pistol to make it go even faster because of the weakness system for like each health bar. But yeah, so like this this part of the fight is great because he's just gonna teleport away and then teleport right back to where he started. So I can just keep shooting him. And then he's gonna dodge to the side, teleport up, and keep repeating that. That is just how this fight works within two different the shadows. <laughs> He's trying to figure out where you guys shot from. All right. So the way this fight works is every 25% in this phase, then Bernadette becomes vulnerable. Um, so I get to do damage to her. And luckily, because of the cryo damage from Berserker, I can chew through her health a little faster. Um, every 33% of her health that's taken out, you then switch back to Dragonlord to then go do 25% of his health. So it's sort of a back and forth thing that you have to be prepared for. All right. So that's 50% of his health. And back to Bernadette. So if I if I had to put anything in my vault for a safety save strat, it would or like the the vault or the bank or whatever in this game, it would have been a a two x sticky toward pistol because of how much time it saves. All right. The bullets right. pinging off is just the funniest audio for this whole thing. Yep. All right, so this is where Bernadette's going to die. So I'm probably about 20 seconds from time, 30 seconds from time. So I'd get ready on it. All right, Bernadette's gone. I'm actually out of ammo. I need to go find more ammo. That's hilarious. So probably more like 45 <laughs> seconds. Sorry, Tech, I just baited you. Ray's going to be so mad. Yeah, Ray and I are friends, so it's not a big deal. Yeah. You can, <laughs> we can let you go over on your run if you're a friend. It's chill. All right, all right, get ready. So, Dragon Lord dies. Time is on fade to black. And time. Oh yeah, something's messed up with my install, so the bottom of the cutscenes look weird. Don't worry about it though. I was about to say, is that a Discord stream That's, issue or is that a? Uh... I I down patched my game and now all cutscenes look like this. I don't know why. Cool. Yep. All right. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that because it's a copyrighted song. We don't want that. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that is Wonderlands. Uh, it is very brutal in RNG. So like, it's not hard to do this run with like all the glitches that you have. The big thing is, can you get the loot to back it up? And as like this run, this particular run was really rough on RNG until I got to the section where I got the Pookie pistol, and that purple Jacob's pistol would have carried this so much faster. But that is the nature of Wonderlands. So, anyway, um, I don't have anything else to say. Thanks, uh, Amy, for having. Me. I hope uh, hope this was entertaining for you all. I hope you enjoyed seeing it. Um, I'm on YouTube. If you want to follow me, Shockwave on YouTube, you can just uh, watch me there. I won't be doing runs of this. I'll be doing runs of other stuff in the future. But uh, this was sort of like a de-rust thing. So, anyway, that's it for me. I'm gonna hand it back to you, Amy. All right. Uh, not not much else to say for me. Um... You know, if, if you're coming in at the end of this run and you want to watch it, uh, youtube.com slash games done quick. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you want to see it live, uh, go to twitch.tv slash games done quick every weekday, weekday at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekend at 1 p.m. Eastern. Wow, I swear I've done this for like almost two years now. Um, <laughs> that said, uh, we're going to go to a break. We'll be right back with uh, Borderlands 2 by Deceptics.
All right. Welcome back, everyone. Moving right along. So I, I said it before. I'll say it again. Uh, in case you've been coming here every every other Tuesday night to watch Aimbot, uh, this is actually the final time that we'll be on Tuesday nights. And uh, we're switching to Wednesdays just before speedruns from the crypt, so we'll be at 7 p.m. Eastern. But, uh, yeah, the, my, my first show ever was Borderlands 2 by ZZ Rules, and my, my last show on Tuesday will be uh, Borderlands 2 by Deceptics. Here we go. All right. Thanks, Amy. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to Borderlands 2 Any Percent Gauge. Uh, I'm joined today with Unjust. Do you want to say hello? Hello, everyone. I'm Unjust Action. Uh, I'm the current third place runner of this category. And I'll just be helping out with commentary for the run. Yeah, so uh, I have a couple things to say, but we have a minute or so before we actually get into it. So uh, we'll just watch the cutscene. Uh, we are playing on an older version of the game, more specifically version 1.1.0. 1. 1. Uh, this is because most of the glitches we'll be using are actually not available on the current patch of the game. Uh, additionally, we are playing as Gage the Mechromancer because she has a couple skills that make her a lot better, easier, just anything that you'd want for the speedrun, she pretty much has it uh, compared to the other characters. So, yeah. That's mostly all of like stuff I have to say at the start. Uh, this map, in particular, is going to be mostly just us following Claptrap. So, uh, yippee, I guess. Uh, time will be starting soon. I will count you in. Three, two, one, go. All right. So, beginning of this game, we get dropped off, train explosion, uh, and we get to follow Claptrap. Uh, there's two triggers that I just ran by. Uh, if, you beat him, if you beat Claptrap to those triggers, uh, he will continue moving instantly instead of uh, stopping right away. Uh, additionally, you may notice that I am playing cap to 30 FPS right now. Uh, a little quirk with this game is every single time an NPC stops moving, and then has to start moving again, uh, they will begin moving faster the lower your frame rate is. Uh, super fun, super enjoyable, obviously. Uh, so the beginning of this run will be played at 30. Well, the beginning being the next like 30 or so seconds. And right here, you just basically have to wait for Claptrap to move and listen to some dialogue. And uh, while he's going ahead and talking and just explaining a bit what's story and plot and stuff that speedrunners don't really care about too much, uh, the step's going to be setting up uh, the first trick of the run. Uh, it's called a death fling. Basically, the idea is that um, once if once you're downed in the game, you'll enter fight for your life, and then if you bleed out, you'll go through this ragdoll animation. Um, now, if you ragdoll into inside of some collision, you can get flung out at a really high speed if you have high enough FPS. You still only need about 100 FPS or so. But Asep's going to line himself right up next against this barrel here, get ready to turn into this uh, crate just after the cutscene. Then he's going to fall off the ice block he's standing on, line himself up in a spot, and he's going to fling his uh, hitbox at the wall just behind him. This is going to hit a save through the wall, then he's going to exit to menu, and that's going to skip a whole bunch of dialogue and waiting around. And himself, lining it up. There, the hitbox got flung, hit the save icon, you can see at the top right, and we exit to menu and load back in, and that skips a whole bunch of waiting around and dialogue. It's kind of a theme at the beginning of this run. A lot of save quits to skip Claptrap moving and talking. Yeah, um, lots of dialogue. Because he likes to be very slow. Other characters can actually just, like, wedge themselves into the corner there and hit the save through the wall without doing the death thing. But Gage has a slightly smaller hitbox, uh, so we have to do that fun little trick. Then. Yeah, I think she's the only one that has to do that fling, right? Yep. Like, yeah, every can... other Vault Hunter can do it, even Salvador, who is shorter. Yeah, canonically shorter, but he, is, he can still hit it for some reason. So, next piece of combat, uh, I'm going to clear it out early, 
Uh, we The XP routing in early game is really strict. Uh, and so any point in time that we can just kill enemies without uh, really losing time at all, we're going to do it. There are a couple places where we'll want to be at a specific point. There's not too many. I think like so, one that's actually routed. Yeah. Uh, a little piece of combat optimization you'll see is double shotting. Uh, if you shoot, hold down the trigger, reload, and then melee, you can actually uh, subvert the fire rate cap and shoot twice in a row. Uh, you can see this is a bolt action sniper. Uh, so I actually normally have to wait for the gun to like actually, you go through the animation. Uh, but instead, I could shoot, hold down the trigger, reload, melee, and that'll achieve what's called a double shot. Uh, coming up, I will do a variation of that called uh, swap double shotting. Uh, you could do, you can achieve the same double shot mechanic, but instead of by instead of meleeing, you can actually just swap away. Uh, and if you instantly swap back to the weapon, you can chain this back to back to back to back, and just spray a bunch of bullets. Uh, so if I can get this lineup correct, we'll see how this goes. I really like the strat. It's really nifty. I should learn how to do this at some point. It's a lot more fun than the uh, other strat. Yeah. It's... There we go, he's dead. Yeah, so you can probably tell the sniper rifle is not supposed to shoot that quickly, but uh, we're gamers, so we don't. So after I grabbed the eye um, that Knuckle Dragger conveniently dropped, uh, I did a double save quit. Uh, this skips multiple animations and pieces of dialogue. Uh, and so instead of sitting and waiting around, uh, we can instead just let the uh, animations play in the background while I slowly make my way back. Uh, I should note, if you see me randomly swapping weapons, that's just, uh, I don't know, it's just fun. It's just something I do while I'm waiting. Uh, it's not actually a strat most of the time. We're gamers, so we don't want Chilling, I guess. Pretty much, don't worry about it. You're welcome. Perks of being an artificial intelligence. I'm networked into almost everything on this planet. It's a long way to Sanctuary. Please take whatever you need for the journey ahead. Let me know when you're ready to go meet with Sir Hammerlock, minion. So, coming up, we're going to see our first instance of the... Uh, of a glitch called merging. Uh, if you swap away from a gun, go in your backpack during the animation and then replace the slot that the gun is in, uh, you can actually make the game think you're holding more than one gun at the same time. Uh, and this will pass uh, implicit stats like crit damage onto other guns. So if I do this with a sniper rifle onto the pistol, the pistol now has the additional crit damage that my sniper has. So, uh, combat gets a lot easier in certain places. And we'll be utilizing the glitch throughout the entire D of the run, just to gain a bit more damage. And uh, so this is Liarsburg, first town where you meet Hammerlock. The uh, spawns here are consistent every time. Um, so you get to memorize the spawns and you get to just fight them very quickly. Cool. Yeah, the, again, only, the only spawn that's like awkward is the third enemy that spawns after the first two. <laughs> Other than that, it's always the same. And then uh, we're just going to be save quitting at the end of each objective update just to skip a bunch more dialogue and waiting around. It may seem slow to have to run back down each time, but it is much, much faster than waiting around for that. There's a lot of dialogue in the, in the early parts of this game. A pleasure to meet you, Volt Hunter. I am Sir Hammerlock. So again, with the XP route being pretty tight, uh, once this cutscene's over, I'm going to be just shooting rack. Uh, we need to hit four and a half bars into level three uh, at a certain time. So that certain time is actually coming up quite quick. 
So shooting these rack will give us a decent amount of XP that we need. Now, if you could hand me the robot's eye, please. Yeah, the idea behind the uh, setting up your XP that way is because whenever you level up in this game, game we call level up bonus, where you will deal double damage for 30 seconds. There's a boss coming up in a little bit of time. We basically want to have it so we get the level up bonus just in the nick of time right before that boss. You can come that boss a lot quicker. So conveniently there is a couple of bully monks that spawn over here that I can quickly take out for some extra XP. Yeah, we have to wait for Hammerlock to repair the bounty board here. And now so we're going to be babysitting Blackcraft for a little bit. It's going to be another theme you'll see for the next little bit of the early game. It's basically... The, this whole mission is basically get Blackcraft to the end of the map. And uh, there's a few fights along the way that kind of interrupt it. So we have to basically... We'll see Decept might be capping his FPS at certain points. Because that'll cause Blackcraft to uh, stop pausing. I mean, movement triggers um, a little bit quicker. And be quite a few of those throughout this area because Cloud Grip has a lot of move triggers. Yep. Actually, the next one up here, I won't cap just to show you the difference. Uh, it's it's pretty massive. Uh, I am capped 150, so it won't be as bad. But as you can tell, he does sit there for a significant amount more than usual. That hurt. I'm just going to take a knee. Of course, like the first guy we walk into has a fire pistol. Of course, it had to happen. Yeah, um, enemies like to spawn with fire pistols in this section, and if you get set on fire, it's just really, really bad. You're probably down. It can really mess you up in certain parts. No, right here, Decept's going to be doing another nifty trick. He's going to be jumping on top of this little support beam here before the fight. You know, wait till the dialogue ends, so these fight, these kills actually count towards the fight. Then, the reason he's up here on this pillar is because immediately following this mandatory fight, I'm doing a grenade jump into the boss's arena a little bit early. Your grenade jump is just a typical damage boost. We throw a grenade at our feet, run and jump, go stick into the arena. Typically, you have to wait for Claptrap to do an animation from the, to lower the bridge, but if you just Jump across, hit his trigger from the other side. He will just walk straight through the bridge, walk on air where the bridge is supposed to be, into the arena. It's kind of funny. You can actually go out of bounds a little bit and uh, on air. Then also right there, you saw the yeah. step got level up bonus. Which is why we set up our XP in that way. And uh, just before this cutscene, I actually shot uh, one of the enemies early. Uh, it'll just finish this fight quicker. I'm really Thinking. good at double shotting, if you could tell. And uh, right here, just picked up a grenade mod that dropped from Boom Boom, which is just like a modification to your grenade. There's all different types you can get throughout the run. We won't be using any because we want no grenade mod, which just because it's the best for grenade jumping. But when he picked up the grenade mod, it played a little bit of tutorial dialogue, which skipped Claptrap's dialogue that would otherwise play there, saving a couple seconds. And now we get freed from Claptrap for a little bit. Um, he's going to be killing a bunch of enemies here just to get as much XP as possible at this point. And we get to run ahead and catch up to Claptrap. We just kind of shot him across the world in a cannon there. That's kind of what's going on in the story at this point. The and, only uh, way to make a move faster. Yeah, it really just shoot him with a cannon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he damage boosted in his own way. True. He's just the best speedrunner. We should take notes, honestly. Really? So while I'm running here, uh, I am trying to take some time to kill a couple enemies just for some XP. Uh, I am... Uh, intentionally swapping away from my gun every time. Uh, each time you shoot the bolt action sniper and you have to sit through the animation before your next shot, uh, you can't sprint. Uh, but if you swap away and back or melee or just any sort of way to just cancel it, uh, it'll allow you to sprint right away. Now we're back at Cloud Trap. We get to slow down again. Luckily, there's only one more place we have to escort him. And then we're free. Me, 
Uh, guys hiding from I got me. no spawns out of the back door. Weird. Yeah, that never happens. <laughs> Literally zero spawns. Okay. That was very strange. So normally you have to take like a really long path to the left here and go all the way up and around. But Decept's just gonna do a little bit of fancy parkour. We call this chain skip because we jump on a chain. We're very creative with our skip names as you can tell. And that'll just get us up here quicker and give us a bit of time to get a more XP while we wait for the dialogue. Really death trap there. He'll uh, help us out getting some XP from the enemies that just spawned. So he's gonna do a little jump through the window here to get into the boss's arena a little bit early. So he's gonna get right up and close and personal with Captain Flint here. Uh, Captain Flint can be really tricky sometimes. Sometimes he just decides uh, he wants to be mean and you will have a really bad time with him. Most of the time he's pretty okay. Getting up here early allows us to kind of manipulate what he does and body block him to slow him down if need be. Yeah, there's still a little bit of randomness, but uh, it's mostly the same. It's a new torture dolls, boys. So a little quirk with Captain Flint is he has a shield on his face, uh, so the only way to crit him is by shooting him in the back of the head. Uh, or, if you shove your face in his face, uh, your barrel goes behind his... Uh, shield face and just does damn does crit without having to walk around him or shoot through the little slit where his eyes are okay that was close i'm surprised that worked <laughs> um so uh you might have noticed i didn't actually kill flint right away uh i was going for a trick called flitmaneth which we got uh, normally, you have to finish this entire wave fight before Claptrap will come open this door. Uh, it takes forever, it's long, tedious, uh, but these two psychos that spawn down here can actually hit Claptrap's move trigger, uh, which is what just happens, which is why he's opening the door without the fight being over. And uh, normally you'd have to it's... finish that whole wave of enemies that spawn afterwards before he'll even start moving. But it saves like 20-ish yeah. seconds or so. Depends on how good you are at shooting enemies. Then you have to make sure you don't actually kill the last enemy because you will soft lock unless you do it in a specific way. So Yeah, he'll start back walking backwards. Yeah, you'll hit the triggers out of order and won't be able to continue. So at this point, we just want a whole bunch of XP. We need to hit level 8 at a very specific time um, for reasons we'll get to once we get there. So what we're going to do is travel to Three Horns Divide and then back into Southern Shelf. And this will put us right near Boom Boom's Arena which we can get back into with a little grenade jump. And we're going to be doing this uh, just two more times just to get a lot more XP and make sure we're at uh, where we need to be. So, that's one kill. Gotta do the same thing one more time, like I just said. And then we can go back to the main story. Uh, at this point, I'm going to spec into a skill called Anarchy which will give me more damage with the cost of accuracy uh, for every kill that I get. Uh, there's additional ways of getting it, but the easiest way to explain it is just every kill. Uh, that'll be a big part of our damage throughout this run, so it's very important that we get that now. And uh, right uh, there, I... Seth rebound his interact key to be on his mouse wheel. Um, this is going to enable us to do a strat we call scroll skipping, which Again, very creative with the naming. Um, we put our interact key on the mouse wheel. And then if you interact at a certain times on very specific uh, characters, or in this case, the Petroide, um, you can actually skip certain pieces of dialogue. We don't fully understand how to do it or like why it works. We know how to do it, of course, but like we don't know why it works this way. It works in very niche spots, so you can't just use it all over the place. Yeah, so right there you can interact with the catch ride. Normally there'd be a dialogue piece playing right now before we could pick up this Hyperion adapter. If we just wait for the dialogue to end and then catch a ride, we can skip that other longer piece of dialogue we'd have to wait for. That guy is not going to be nice to you, I don't think. Nope, definitely not. He's no, definitely he's gonna, chasing me on the minimap. Uh, 
This is... Oh, he loses his fight. Yeah, you normally don't get a badass psycho here, but uh, it's a little unlucky. Oh, I have no ammo. Thoughts? Yeah, you need to buy some too before you go on. Yeah, yeah, no, we'll figure that out. Don't worry about it. <laughs> this is fine. No, actually, this is exactly what I wanted to happen. Okay. This is... Don't worry about it. That was normal. That was flawless. Yeah, that was perfect. That's what we meant to do. <laughs> Normally there's a, a dialogue, see if you can go for it here. Uh, if you don't have a, you know, badass psycho ruining your day. You have to get the di get into a car uh, really quickly. So the dialogue doesn't get messed up. But, um, unfortunately, the dialogue got messed here. up. <laughs> uh, one thing that you might notice is every time I try, and, or when I try to get out of a car, uh, I attempt to skew the car in any way. Uh, which will skip the three second animation of getting out of a car. Uh, so we try to do that every time. Uh, we'll see. Sometimes the game says no, you're still going to watch the animation. But. Just like that. Not skewed enough, apparently. One starts talking immediately, and Reese should be. You have to like talk to the person twice on the same game tick, is how it works. That seems to skip it. Sometimes it can skip animations too, which doesn't really make sense, but you know, we'll take it. Time it makes sense time if you save. don't think about it. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, the, the scroll skip on uh, Reese there allows us to pick up the power core instantly, uh, or else we normally wouldn't be able to, but we, we can because of the scroll skip. Uh, additionally, just, you know, average death warp brings us right back to the button so we can go straight to Sanctuary. So now we've made it to Sanctuary, uh, which is the hub map for this game. Uh, we need to help them with their power core. That was the whole reason we had that detour in Thurian's Divide. Uh, so that they have a shield to stay safe from Hyperion Moonshots. Uh, and normally there's an introduction to said Hyperion Moonshots, but I'm actually going to go around that trigger, uh, which is important because we can use it for a dialogue skip very soon. So right here I'm going to walk back into the trigger, trigger the dialogue, and then it will skip that line, like that. So Angel talks sooner, sooner, and it allows us to meet the uh, town mechanic a lot sooner. Our good friend Scooter. Everyone loves Scooter. Probably the best NPC in this video game. Yeah, he's got to be up there. That's some of the best dialogue. We won't be hearing too much of it in this run, unfortunately. But in the all quest run, we hear a lot more of it. Yeah. We definitely do not hear a lot from this character. So right up to the cutscene here. Sorry, go on. Uh, because just like uh, Reese, we could just skip his dialogue by scrolling on him. Uh, which allows us to pick up the fuel cells and the iridium right away. That yeah, is the normally, achievements menu. Thank you, Steam. That is the achievements menu. Thank you, Steam. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's a fun thing as well. Uh, so before in this game, uh, there's an achievements button on the pause menu. And it used to just put you in the Steam overlay, which you could just disable uh, when you're playing Borderlands 2. So now, with the new Steam update, if you hit your achievements button, it actually tabs you out into Steam. So uh, you have to be a lot more careful when you're save quitting in this game now. 
It's super fun. I'd like yeah, to just, thank Steam for the uh, the problems, issues. Okay, anyway. Uh, with the uh, Iridium that we got from, Sco from Scooter, uh, I bought a grenade SDU. Uh, and that's very important because we do need more than three grenades for uh, one of the strats that will occur later on. And also, the more grenades, the merrier. Because uh, we do a lot of grenade jumping because it's our main source of movement throughout this run. You have a lot of XP. I, I do. Oh, I did get a badass at the, the, the totally plans. Yeah, the uh, RNG yeah. manipulation. Yeah. Yeah, the RNG manipulation. So, uh, right now we're headed to Frostburn Canyon uh, to go rescue Roland. He's like ahead of the resistance against Handsome Jack, the main antagonist. Um, he's been kidnapped by this bandit called the Firehawk. We gotta go rescue him. Are you gonna do the jump or are you gonna do the boring strat? Uh, I'll go for the jump just because you said hey. something. If I fall <laughs> into the abyss, it's all your fault. Okay, we're good. So I'm the only person who actually goes for that jump in runs because it says like 0. 0.2 seconds or something. And it if says you 0. 0.2 and Whoa. you can lose time so easily because if you like, like I just did right there, I got stuck on the the shock cactus or whatever. That So that was slower than just driving around. Yeah, so, but like, my goal adjust. here is faster than yours, though. <laughs> yeah, so. okay. Uh, you know what? Understandable. <laughs> no, no. You know what, dude? It was because of that. <laughs> That's for sure. Also, that hang on. I'm not sure. taking this slander. I go for that jump when we did when we did uh, co-op all quests. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah. I keep trying to talk everyone into it, but they it's not seem to. It. It's, it's no, it's, it's so worth, worth it. it. No, it's so no, cool. No, it's not. It literally isn't. I'm not even gonna attempt to kill that guy. That Dude, just drive a car better. That is literally not happening. Just drive the. Okay, I'll work on yeah. that actually. Yeah. You know what, dude? I'll work on that. <laughs> I just need 10,000 hours in driving practice. Listen, I'm like the worst at driving in this game compared to everyone else, and I still go for it. <laughs> you go for it. Yeah. Is, uh, you know what? Is Kovacs coming out with the drivetrain? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I need. All right, so we're taking a little detour here to grab this doll SMG that spawns in this puddle 100% of the time. Uh, it's very high damage, very useful. It's going to be our main source of damage until level 10. Uh, especially when you, you know, merge multiple sources of crit on it, it does a lot. Yeah, it's like one of the best SMGs in the game, and it comes at like the perfect time of the run, and it's just sitting in the puddle on the ground every run. That was pretty handy. Uh, and Descent uh, also checked into a skill called yeah, Close Enough right. there, uh, where basically if your bullets hit a surface as opposed to an enemy, they'll have a chance to ricochet towards an enemy, do a little bit of reduced damage. Uh, the stack's up to 50% chance to ricochet for 50% reduced damage. And that'll be used a little bit in this area and quite a lot more later on in the run. Just a little bit more. So, uh, one little quirk with merging is that if you pull out the gun that you've merged, uh, your stats go away because the game's like, oh, right. You're not supposed to be holding that gun. I have a grenade bomb on. You're not supposed to be holding that gun. And so it uh, undoes them, undoes, undo, uh, you get the idea. Uh, gets rid of the merge. Uh, so what we can do instead is just the same way we drop reload to reload our guns, we can enter our inventory or put the gun in our inventory, take the gun out of our inventory, and that will achieve a reload. Oh, so Decept's going to be picking up uh, just all the items he sees on the ground. Uh, once we get to level 10, we're going to need uh, to buy a couple of items. So we're going to need around like $1,600 usually. Sometimes it's a bit more. Um, so just be making sure he grabs everything. I really like if Gage could stop breathing down my ear, that'd be cool. <laughs> I love Gage dialogue in this game. It's, the yeah, best. it's amazing. It's the best. We all know it. It's a really good shield. Can't inventory reload now. 
That is true. That is true. I did sell my gun. Actually, I might be able to because my list is slot one. It's slot one. You have to make sure. Oh, well, no, it'll still put you on another gun. Oh, right. It'll still put me on a gun. Eh, whatever. I'll just manually reload. It's not a problem. Yeah, details. Oh, well. This Lilith turns out. Oh, no. Lilith is a Firehawk, not a Bandit. What? I never. What? Whoa, crazy. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so Lilith is a playable character in Borderlands 1. And so this is like your surprise introduction to her. Long story, lots of internal bleeding. She likes to talk a lot. Could you help me uh, but thankfully, we can scroll skip her the same way we scroll skip Scooter uh, and Reese. Oh. So once we give her her medicine, me some medicine, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> we'll be able to skip her dialogue and start the fight instantly yeah, instead of sitting and waiting for her to shut up. And it's just basic combat. You get a round of psychos, and then you'll get a round of mixed bandit spawns. There should be one more. Never mind. Okay. Cool. Thanks, game. So now this is just a quick wave fight. Clear as quickly as possible. You know, it'd be really cool if I could, you know, inventory reload. That'd be nice. Like a skill issue to me. I know. It truly <laughs> is, though. They found another way in. Yeah. Oh, no, it doesn't work. Okay. I think I hit the up arrow to make that work. I pro oh, okay, that helps. Oh, perfect. Save. We got a gun now. <laughs> now we can do it. I, okay. Thanks, game, for the extra. Oh, well, you need enemy. the XP. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Again, uh, uh, you normally. Bonus? Oh, okay. That's good timing, actually. You normally don't get a badass there. You usually only get them in the end of each wave. But, uh, RNG's on our side, yeah, apparently. Giving you the. Maybe it's that loose time. Yeah, yeah. RNG is on our side, you say? Yeah, that's what that means. Sure. I'll take your word for it. I have a lot of money though, which is nice. I should have a lot of money. I hope I do. <laughs> anyway, we scroll skip Lilith once again so we can turn the quest instantly. Uh, there's unfortunately not many more scroll skips left in this run. Uh, as cool as it would be to be able to just skip all the dialogue by scrolling. Yeah, it's only a couple places we can use. And even in those few places, it still saves like two minutes or something. Maybe not that much, but just about. And we have other forms of dialogue skipping that we'll get to throughout the run. So at this One. point in the story, uh, we are meant to actually rescue our pal Roland from the dam. Uh, because, shocking, wasn't with the Firehawk. Uh, and because we're not in a bandit technical, they won't let us in. So we have to do everyone's favorite thing in the Borderlands series, car combat. Yeah, car combat. We all hate car combat. It's not that amazing, uh, uh, it's, especially it's because <laughs> cars can just, they have them a mind of their own. They're kind of hard to manipulate. Uh, they take a lot longer to kill than a normal enemy. It's just kind of annoying, but uh, hopefully it goes okay. We'll see how this turns out. Yeah, the pathing on these cars, uh, they kind of are scripted to drive away from you. That's pretty much it. Um, can maybe. Oh, I didn't talk to Ellie. You know that. Oh, is I was gonna the, say that is, that is a part of the quest. I oh, do did he not drop a part or like what's going? Yeah. There also wasn't another spawn. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, this isn't right. Um. So yeah, the cars kind of can drive in like really weird ways. They can drive like right to where you need to go next, or they can drive in the exact opposite direction. Um. Also, that you can get like different types of cars to spawn. Mm. That's a thing too. Um, this run is a I'm, lot of. Uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna worry about it. Yeah, no, I won't either. Uh, <laughs> I've that was just seen a, enough badasses. Yeah. <laughs> so here you see you get a headhunter, which is a, a car that can do a lot more damage to you than normal. So if you get like a lot of those in a row, your car might explode, which, as you can imagine, it's quite a quite an issue. 
another thing I'm doing is uh, I'm actually braking a lot when I want to speed up. Uh, because the more friction you have, the faster you get to your max speed. So obviously the best way of getting more friction is to brake, which inadvertently speeds you up. I... Yep. When you're at low speeds at least, yeah. Yeah. My car's feeling uh, amazing right now. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, no, it's fine. I just got, you know, a bandit technical. Yeah, no, I'm fine. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah, yeah, no, no, this is fine. Nothing goes wrong. It's not like they're just driving away or anything. They're stuck. Will they run me over? Or run, drive just... away? Oh. Okay. No, that's fine. That's a... <laughs> yeah, so oh, something has got uh, two headers in a row there, and then there's also um, enemy buzzard, which is just like a flying vehicle. Of him. Shooting him down. So he wasn't able to heal. Basically, I got outplayed. Uh, yeah, actually, there's another headhunter for good measure too. Yeah, yeah, just just to, just in case you needed more tough enemies to kill, there's there's one more. Sick. All right, well, car combat's over, thankfully. I don't want to touch that again. Um, but now we actually have our own car that we can use. I, oh, you got the dialogue. Hey, yo, welcome That's to a new like... improved catcher eye. Okay. <laughs> oh, <that was> <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Okay. so one thing, uh, I'm in a barrel technical because it's faster than any other car in the game. Uh, it just it just is. Uh, second of all, each time you walk up to a catch ride, you have a rare chance of getting a certain line of dialogue that has higher priority than any other line of dialogue from the catch ride, which skips dialogue, which is what just happened. Yeah, so there's like a bunch of different lines that the catch ride can play, and sometimes it doesn't even play one at all, and it's only one that actually can skip any dialogue. It's like the rarest time save in the game, basically. <laughs> hey, you have you <laughs> really, to balance but... out everything else that's happened. So here we have Badmaw, uh, the dude with the shield. Uh, so he's he's quite hard to kill. We are a little under leveled for this area, so hopefully I can use Death Trap to distract him. Uh, hopefully is the keyword here. Just like that. That was a really nice fight. That can't go better than that, basically. And there's another instance of, of what scroll interact can do. Uh, for some reason, if you interact multiple times on the drawbridge wheel, uh, it brings it down faster. Spin the don't, wheel faster, man. Just spin the wheel faster. It's one of the funnier instances. Uh, roll skipping. And we're gonna turn around here right after being bad model and entering Bloodshot Stronghold. We need to hit level 10 at this point, so we're just gonna come up here. We're a little uh, setup here, not too precise. And then we're gonna try and knock bad model off the cliff here with a grenade. Get some more XP. If you shoot him, you get credit for the, the void kill. As long, yeah, as long as you're the one who does the last tick of damage, you'll get credit for it. You shouldn't even need to shoot him, but like, there was one time where I did this and I didn't get the XP for it, and now I'm really paranoid it's gonna happen again. Oh, I always shoot him a lot. Because well, normally the grenade the technically does the damage, but sometimes the game says no. Deal with it. Has that ever happened to you before? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. It mostly only happens with the, uh, like, midgets on a shield, but not with actual bad maw. So now so at this point, are, uh, at everyone's favorite part of the run, uh, RNG. Uh, right now we are looking for a Vladoff rocket launcher, that's a good shield, and a Jacob shotgun. Uh, oh, I didn't sell my own stuff. Hopefully we get them up quick. Uh, it's very important that we get this gear now. Uh, you'll see afterwards why that is very why it's as important as it is. So yeah, basically level ten is important because it's the first level rocket launchers can spawn. You need a blood off rocket launcher, which you've got right here. Um, the whole idea behind that is blood off rocket launchers have an ammo saving property, and on earlier patches of the game, um, it isn't programmed correctly. So, if you get to the free shot of your Vladoff rocket launcher, thanks, you got a shotgun. Um, get to the free shot, 
of your Vlad off, and then swap away and swap back, you will stack that free shot onto your character. And this can be done multiple times. That's not where you want to go. Nope. We're fine. <laughs> uh, so right here, this is going to shoot once, swap away and swap back, do it twice. And now his gun that consumes two ammo per shot will just be able to shoot indefinitely. So now his gun looks like this. Um, infinite ammo with a gun that can fire as fast as you can pull the trigger is really good as you can see. And right here, this is going to be doing another out of bounds. Bloodshot skip. This map's a gigantic U, uh, but there's only a trigger at the beginning and the very end. So if we can get to the very end, then we could just skip the entire area. Okay, right here this. is a pretty difficult trick called Super Skip. Ah, uh, oh. Oh, just okay. barely missed it. Unfortunately. I, yeah. I think I jumped a little early. Oh, well. That's all right. But the idea there is you want to get on top of that wall, and using one grenade doesn't give you enough height. So, um... That's not enough more. to But you want to use two grenades just to get on top of the... the really high ceiling there. There is uh, another way to do it. It's a little bit slower, but it works just as well. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting bullied. Nope, continuing to get bullied. Okay, I'm just going to say Gwen try it again. Yeah. <laughs> I got way too bullied with the rats. Yeah, that was very unlucky there. I should have money for grenades. Okay. Okay, we're going to give it another shot. That was probably as unlucky as I could get it at rats. Uh, yeah, so normally that doesn't go that bad. Alright, take two. I'm obviously going to go for the hard thing again. What? That's, that's given. That should work. There we go. There you okay, go. Okay, just pretend that was the first try, uh, and it looked flawless. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're at the very end of the map now, uh, and so we can enter Roland's jail cell through the back, because it doesn't exist, uh, and then free him and just leave. Vault Don't worry about it. Good this, is the, this is the way you're supposed to do it. Oh yeah, this is, this is how I did it my first playthrough. <laughs> you know what, I'll take um, second try super skip. That's fine. That's really good. This will just take a second. Uh, so yeah, a lot going on right here. Uh, Super Skip is like a, quite a difficult trick, and it comes immediately after um, you know the RNG section. Uh, this is a section that a lot of runs can die in. Also, another thing to note is that uh, Deceptics bound his shoot key to mouse wheel down, uh, and he has a hyper scroll wheel mouse, so he'll be able to just fire very very quickly. Basically, always at the fire rate cap using this Jacob shotgun. This is also where close enough, you know, comes in handy. Uh, shooting the ceiling sometimes is more advantageous than just shooting the actual enemy. Uh, so you might see that a lot. And again, close enough is just a skill that allows us to have our bullets ricochet if they hit a surface instead of an enemy. So while we have hit our level 10 target, uh, there are still XP targets to hit throughout the run, so getting XP is still as, as important as it was in early game. Uh, just a little bit less strict. Uh, so I'm going to try my best to kind of clear out some of the areas as I'm running through without wasting too much time sitting still. Uh, another thing to note, uh, this game has a weighted ammo drop system, so if you're beneath a third of your max ammo capacity for any of the uh, ammo types in the game, you have a higher chance of getting them out of ammo crates from enemies. Uh, so right there I threw a grenade before opening that ammo crate because it gave me a greater chance of actually getting grenades out of it. And if I could throw one grenade and get... that's gonna hurt. 
if I can throw one grenade uh, and get two back, that's uh, definitely a choice I'm going to make. And then right here, we're doing a little bit of out of bounds traversal. That is not how you grenade jump. Uh, instead of running around in a U shape like that, we could just jump over that invisible wall uh, to get straight to Warden. Boss, by the way. And then this up's going to run against the, uh, the wall here, hit a save through the wall, and then save quit to skip the little bit of fighting you normally have to do after the boss is dead. So turning the quest, that means we can leave now. I'm already level 11, which is really good. Uh, my XP is definitely feeling nice right now. That's really abnormal to be level 11 here. Yeah, but oh my, and you're like a, just a bar into it. Yeah, I'm like, like, really I'm like well into it as well. So we need to meet Roll back in Sanctuary. And we are also going to pick up some quests to do dialogue skips. Uh, the first part of a dialogue skip is grabbing quests under dialogue. Uh, because of dialogue priorities, I'm going to say dialogue a lot in this sentence. Uh, mm -hmm. You can actually pick up quests under... I'm going to grab that sniper, actually. Uh, never mind, I'm not going to buy it. Right. Okay, I made the decision. Uh, if you uh, pick up a quest under certain lines of dialogue, you can actually preserve the uh, introductory line of quests that tell you what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and we can play those whenever we want from our backpack in order to... Uh, skip more dialogue. So playing dialogue on top of dialogue to skip dialogue. Cool? Cool. I'm glad you understand. What about dialogue? Uh, oh. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, right there, you saw the set by a sniper from the vendor there. Snipers are really good for merging because every sniper in the game has just a base 100% critical bonus given to it. And we can merge that onto our character. So we can use it with any gun in the game. Jacob snipers have an additional 60% crit bonus given to them, so ideally we want three Jacob snipers. But any other sniper will do the job just fine. Typically you're just happy to have three snipers in a run. Yeah, that's that's a realistic expectation. Just hope you're not running off of... Hmm, I might not have enough stacks. I'm gonna try that again. The Jacob's pistol that we got back in the first map of the game, it uh, gives a little bit as well, because all Jacob's guns also have a little bit of a crit bonus, but not anywhere near the amount that snipers give. So beginning of this map is mostly just a lot of running around, uh, clearing out any camps that we can, uh, because again, we still do need to hit certain XP targets, level targets, throughout. Uh, the entirety of this run, pretty much. You got that. I hope so. Uh, right here, right before the cutscene, Decep is trying to line himself up perfectly with Tina here. And then right before the cutscene started, he jumped, trying to get as far as possible. And there's, if you do it correctly and line yourself up, there's a short window uh, where you can talk to Tina a little bit earlier, right there like that. So normally you'd have to run up to Tina and talk to her. Uh, in co-op, this saves a little bit more time, uh, simply because it's, or it doesn't save a bit more time, it just sets up a dialogue script easier. But yeah, that really only saves like four seconds, because if I miss it, I just walk over to where Tina actually is and then just talk to her. Getting shot means you're in the air. I also don't have Death Trap here because I leveled up a little early. Yeah, which should be okay. I'm missing out on a little bit of XP, but since I was higher than normal, it shouldn't really be a big deal. I think it'll be more than fine. Especially with that. So we just got to retrieve these two uh, explosives from this camp here. And then instead of running back the whole distance, there's a save we hit along our way. 
one armed bandit, that's a lot of XP as well. You'll be really good on XP. <laughs> yeah, I I will indeed be good on XP. That is for sure. Uh, I have He's... not taken enough damage though. There's a train. Gaming. That is so rare. Oh my wow. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah we're doing a death. Continue. We're doing a death warp here to get back to the save instead of running back. This gets us about halfway back. Normally, you just hope the bandits deal a bit of damage to you, and then you use that explosive right there. But if you get the train to spawn there, you can just run into it, and it'll kill you instantly, which is really fast actually, because you don't have to go through the uh, bleed out animation. Yeah, actually, nice. That's the first time that's ever happened to me. I've never I've, on time with the train. <laughs> I've been so, so close so many times, but never actually gotten it. That was so strange. Anyway, we have to sit and wait for Tina to do her thing. You know, chit chat, talk, not actually do anything. Uh, she just magically makes put on knocks. But uh, right now, I'm going to shoot this explosive barrel while I'm waiting. Uh, again, because I have no grenades. Uh, my weighted ammo drops are tied towards grenades. So that explosive barrel should give me about two on the floor when I run by that. Uh, which is also why I didn't buy ammo earlier and just sold instead. Here he's going to play one of the quests he picked up from Lilith, which will start this dialogue. That'll just skip a bit of Tina's dialogue. And then he also picked up Tina's quest there underneath this line of dialogue. So we'll be able to play Tina's quest later and you dialogue from that to skip a bit more as well. I think there's a turtle shield on the floor that I just missed. Uh, yours oh, well. is pretty good, I think, as well. Yeah. That's a flat off. Do we need infinite ammo? Um, I don't know. I think we're okay. Might be useful, though. I'm going to do the same thing here with another quest. Uh, I'm actually... I'm not going to grab that. That's too far away. That's going to help, though. Uh, play another quest. Skip some more dialogue. Uh, that'll be our main source of dialogue skipping throughout the rest of this run. I think it's the only one we actually use from here on out, is just quest swaps over and over and over again. So if you see me grab some quests that you realistically think is kind of useless, like why are you grabbing that? Why, why, why are you wasting time? Uh, it's for dialogue skips. Yeah, there's quite a big detour we'll uh, take in later in Sanctuary to get this quest. Let's start this map here. Decept's going to down himself and bleed out. Um, a fun quirk about this game is that if no save is active in the map, uh, the the save you'll spawn at when you bleed out will default to the fast travel. And so, the set can bleed out and spawn at the end of the map, because that's where the fast travel is in this map. And that avoids just having to run through that entire map. We get right here to the end, to the boss. Well, boss, with quote-unquote. Boss. Yeah, boss. that's the boss, right? He tries his best. Oh, there he goes. He does indeed try. And then he pushes me out of the way. Boss. Indeed. So now we've grabbed this really convenient power core. Uh, we can use it to defend Sanctuary again, you know? We did it earlier, so why not trust the other random power core that we get from an, en from an enemy, actually? Not even, like, someone that's neutral-ish. Did you see how well guarded it was, though? That guy was so tough. I do. I know, right? It like must it's be work. useful. Yeah. yeah. Almost level twelve already. <laughs> <laughs> that is. Yeah, that's definitely something. So, oh no, the co power core we picked up from the bad guys is, is bad. Oh no. Oh no! Shocking. So basically, this just lowers sanctuary's defenses, and now Hyperion. Uh, company Jack owns his uh, hacking sanctuary. Right there, we hit the fast travel from the middle of the sanctuary really far away as it has a big hitbox, and we can save quick to the center instead of running all the way there. And then Decept interacted on the new U station there to rock a piece of tutorial dialogue. Just saved a bit of time of people talking. Gra oh, he didn't say it. Unbelievable. He, were too Unbelievable. Quick. He, he cut himself off. It's crazy. So, uh, right after we give the order to Lilith, there's going to be, or there would normally be, like a 
one plus minute long cutscene. I actually don't know how long it is because I've never watched it. Uh, but you can just skip it by save quitting. You know, just the average. Why not just quit the main menu? So we get teleported away. Save quit. Skips the cutscene. We're straight in through our divide. That's one of the oldest uh, I'm they have ever found. And now we're just gonna do a bit of driving and at this point in the story, um, Sanctuary just like teleported away to get away from the attack that Hyperion was doing and it got disconnected from the fast travel network. Uh, so we're gonna basically just go on a little quest here to restore it to the network and get back to our friends. And normally, like the route is to hit level 12 from this mission right here as you turn in. And typically, some runs you're like, am I gonna hit level 12 here? Is it, uh, I don't know. Um, but this is the most amount of XP I've ever seen anyone have at this Two point. Two and a half bars, by the way. Yeah, this is yeah, kind of okay. funny. Anyway, uh, so we need to level 12 here because that allows us to spec into a skill called Buck Up, which allows Death Trap to, I guess in quotes, buck you up. Uh, if your shield is low, and it'll like greatly increase your recharge uh, rate and lower the delay. Uh, however, if you get Death Trap to buck you up and then travel while that animation is happening, uh, you keep the uh, zero recharge delay and increased recharge rate uh, forever, until, or at least until you save quit. So that's going to be our big piece of survivability and also one of the reasons why Gage is so good. Uh, there's actually an additional reason why Gage is so good, uh, including... Uh, okay. Oh. oh my what? Uh, <laughs> uh, there's an additional reason tied with shields as well, uh, which we'll get to uh, quite soon, as long as I can actually get one. Yeah, so the reason I'm kind of amazed there is uh, the section coming up is we're going to be looking for an upgraded Jacob shotgun, a higher level one. Just to give us a bit more damage. Is that the oh, second one? No, okay. no, I thought it was another <laughs> one. I was, like, I was like, wait a minute. That's not supposed to know his TDR. Um, and just have got one from one of the random enemies here, which is very, very uncommon. Typically, we farm a vendor in the next section coming up uh, to try and get one. But if you get one like that, you don't need to. No amp. Is it 13? Four it's 14. That's a eh. I mean, I'll run with it. It's not great, but... So one anyway. bad piece of RNG is that we didn't get a Hyperion shield here. It's an amp shield. Um, this is the first area in the game where they can spawn. And they're going to be very useful for doing a bit of damage. That went so bad. That is vile. That is bad. I'll use it anyway. It'll do. I'll deal with it. I'll deal with it. I'll deal with it. Yeah, anyway, so we're going to be so... using that in a little bit. Once we're going to get there. Yep. <laughs> and right here we can save, but just get the dialogue. I can't believe you got a shotgun from just a random enemy. That's, That's like that. That truly is. Yep. <laughs> After getting like three badasses in three months of I, getting the worst car luck. Well, except for I could have gone to badass car. That's That's Borderlands runs, baby. Yep. Borderlands <laughs> in a nutshell. I do kind of wish that gun was 15, though, because I did get a good RNG gun, so I wish it was later, but oh well. I can't I can't really be upset about the fact that I got a gun there. I mean... Got another gun, that brick. <laughs> right, right. You know what? Actually, though, on the way. Don't worry. I'm I got a level about. 20 quad at brick yesterday, the day before. That was pretty funny. So here you just have to do a couple of fun grenade jumps just to get it over this waterway. Normally you have to ride like this really slow like monorail across and it's like really awkward. Um takes forever. Uh we can just yeah, do a couple grenade jump jumps. Easy. Yeah. Sim it's simple, as one would say. Now we can just grab this beacon up here. Sitting there. Yeah, we'll just grab it from no one that's around here. Oh, what is that? 
difficult. It's a really difficult enemy enemy to kill. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, this enemy has a a spawning animation, um, so you can get him to like one HP, but you can't actually kill him before the animation's over. Yeah, before he does live longer than most other bosses. Okay, you know that's what? That true. is true, but that's only because he has a spawn animation. Yeah, he uh, forces you to see it. Yeah. Okay. Well, d well, does Bunker count as one of the enemies that lasts the longest? Because they fly around, then perch, then fly around, and then perch again. Yeah, Bunker is special though. Okay. Bunker's bad. Yep. All right. I'll take just one cycle. Zero cycle, yeah. rather. Just, just zero cycle Bunker. It's it really is that easy. <laughs> uh, so right here, I'm taking a little detour, hitting that fast travel. Uh, we are going to use it for a decent amount of this run. It's like right in the middle of three of the next areas we need to go to. Uh, so instead of going from Overlook and then driving all the way over there, we're instead getting that fast travel for later. So here we are, we've made it to Overlook. Uh, normally, uh, there's like a four to six minute fight. You place the beacon and then Hyperion bots attempt to destroy it over and over and over again. Uh, and then you just kind of defend it, wait for the wave to be over, and then, you know, you got it, you're good. Uh, however, that is a awful looking sniper. I didn't say that. Um, anyway, so if I place the beacon and then save quit, what this achieves is breaking the beacon. Now, Gearbox put a failsafe in place where if you repair the beacon seven times, uh, it becomes invulnerable and can't be destroyed anymore. Kind of just like if you're having trouble staying alive and keeping the beacon up, then we could just, well, you just use that instead. Um, however, if you save quit or leave the map in any way while the beacon is invulnerable, uh, it skips the fight. So you don't actually have to do it. Uh, so the routing here is just. Repair the beacon, save quit. Repair the beacon, save quit. Normally, this would be the chance to, for me to get my late game shotgun, uh, but I got one in the fridge from a random enemy. You know, just normal Borderlands stuff. And using the, uh, the barrels that spawn here, damage boost you a little bit quicker. Yeah, That's every what usually gives a little bit of knockback. Game. Yeah, every, uh, every barrel gives a little bit of knockback, except for corrosive barrels. Uh, and shock barrels are weird because you can't instantly destroy a shock barrel with a grenade. So it'll give you knockback, but not instantly, so it's not worth grenade jumping off of it. Yeah, before this area, or before we had this trick, this area used to just be a really big wave fight that had like a bunch of really weird timers in the background that only like, I think Amy, you fully understood that like more or less, right? Uh, FC understood it the most. She explained it to me, and then I understood about ninety percent of it. And all I remember is that this—it's just this fight is awful. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> yeah. It's like between three and a half to four and a half minutes, and if you go outside of that in either way, you lose a bunch of time. Sick. So yeah, you would have to like kill the last enemy at a specific time. Uh, or you would just lose a whole bunch of time out of nowhere. It would be really awful. Yep. And uh, then we found this trick. Okay. And uh, so then I never had to learn that, thankfully. Yeah, this, this was very famously found by a UVHM runner who got really annoyed to this section and like wanted to skip it. And uh, found out he could skip it by blowing it up with a New Game Plus gun. Yep. Love it. I think just one more. Maybe two. I'd be surprised if it's two. Yeah, so this area finally became a little bit... It's like a really... Like, the new strat really uh, opened up a lot of potential with the routing because it gives you a chance to actually farm for a late game shotgun if you don't have one already, which you usually don't. Well, that's really nice. Um, it's also a lot faster and easier. Give me a second while I calibrate it to Sanctuary's new position. I need this grenade. All right, so we've been save quitting the entire run uh, for dialogue skips and such. Uh, but now is when the save quitting. Thank you, Death Trap. Is when the save quitting stops. Uh, that was actually the last save quit of the run. 
Uh, from here on out, we will be stacking uh, Buck up throughout the entire thing, so we can actually use the Amp Shield to its fullest effect at level 15. Yeah, the, the idea is that um, we don't want to save good anymore, because at this point we're going to be getting Buck up, and it's like the only glitch we have that you, that we can uh, get multiple stacks of in a single area, or at least not quickly. And so it's just much, much faster to keep stacking it as we go throughout the run, instead of having to... You know, restack each time like we can do with the other glitches. I kind of want to use the Jacob Sniper in my backpack, but it has Jacob's stock. And I'm scared that's going to ruin my accuracy. Oh, it'll be fine. But this other sniper has a foregrip, so it's like really good. But the crit damage... I, I, think, I think I can deal with 60% less. I'll keep it in my backpack. We'll see how I feel about it. A 14 gun? That is not the vendor I'm looking at. It like happens a lot. The vendors in this game are just really, really broken. They don't work correctly ever. No, that, that's not true. They work. You just have to like be really specific. Because uh, they don't like mouse and keyboard. Which oh, they really do understandable. not. Okay. You end up just like selling your like your equipped gun randomly sometimes, even though you're not even looking at it. So right here, we're getting our second stack of buck up. Uh, at this point, it's really just for survivability, uh, but it will also help us later when we have the amp shield. I am allergic to amps, apparently. Hey, you're not getting great ones this run. No, no, my shield is 58 by 68. <laughs> really good stuff. All right, so we're here, wildlife. Uh, pretty simple area, honestly. It's, we're kind of just going to run through a normal. Uh, but uh, the one thing we are going to make sure we do is skip every single save station, new station, whatever you want to call it. Uh, because the end of this map, I'm going to call it the end, where the boss fight is, is uh, a really far away from the fast travel. Uh, and it would take a while to run there. Uh, however, if we skip all of the new use stations, we can instead just death warp once we're done. Uh, and that, that'll save a decent amount of time. So I, I might take a couple detours. Uh, you'll probably be able to tell when I'm taking a detour. I guess this is one of them. Um, just to get around some of the save stations so that I can actually uh, death warp at the end. The old route before we did the death warp was you basically just have to run all the way back to the fast travel station, and that's a lot, lot slower. Oh, I didn't wound him enough. I don't care if I never see those guns again. I thought I did. I was getting worried. This is actually one of my favorite areas in this video, and there's a lot of really nifty like grenade jumps and routing you have to do here. A lot of the grenade jumps we have to do um, is simply to avoid hitting fast travel stations, so they don't actually directly save time, but they indirectly save time because we can. They allow us to do the death warp at the end of the map. So right here is one of the little detours we can have to do instead of running through there's that building on the left. Yeah, there's a save station in that building, uh, so if we just go around it. Just stand on ropes. I guess they're metal wires. Uh, and just go around it. That's, that's another one we're skipping. You get the Mon tuba. More XP. Yes. I was going to say, does I, I haven't kept up with the any percent XP route in a while. Does it still semi rely on Pomon and Tumba here? No. no. It shouldn't at all. Perfect. It's just kind of like, if you get it, cool. Uh, if you don't, you're fine. I mean, as long as you're really doing your job and worrying about killing enough, you should be okay. Mm -hmm. So another save is behind this door. We're actually going to skip that by doing a little bit of uh, uh, rock climbing. Uh, on newer versions of the game, you can actually skip pressing that button uh, because if you don't on the version of the game that I'm playing on, you hard lock your game and cannot uh, continue whatsoever. No matter what you do, we'll allow you to continue anymore. So. Uh, they just made the button not needed. Uh, however, for this, we do need to get the button. And so here's just a wave fight 
that uh, we have to do. Yeah, there's a couple of the spawns don't actually matter. Uh, I know which ones do. Did you same frame that guy? I think, I, I mean, it's a power loader. So probably. You can, uh, uh, for the zero people that care, uh, the pattern <laughs> for that fight is, that's a shotgun, is, uh, is loader, loader, stalker, loader, stalker, stalker, loader, stalker. Anyway, I don't know, I just, that's a little piece of knowledge that I like to share whenever I can. That was a, you know what type of shotgun that was? It was a Hyperion barreled Idior stock green shotgun. Hmm. That's pretty good. So what can that, what can that be? 18, 19? Uh, 17, 17, 18, 19. It's 17, 18, 19? Okay. Looking for Bloodwing? Oh, I moved her a few hours ago. Somewhere a little more. So again, we got uh, another random drop. That's really useful for Lake Games. <laughs> Shocking. Um, you don't need a like uh, another upgraded shotgun. It's just a nice thing to have. You get really good gear throughout the run. You can actually end up one cycling the final boss. It was a really nice time save, but you need quite good gear to do that. Yeah, and if if I need to keep the amp that I have, uh, we're gonna run into some problems. Yeah, that's not gonna be a, <laughs> that's an option. Not gonna work. I had my boys build the preserve and research the full application. Oh, great! Four grenades. That's exactly it's what I want. Just an elemental Sick. Yippee. Type. If you know how to use it. I'm gonna save this. I'm not gonna nade jump here. <laughs> yep, the door exists. Uh, yeah, this out of bounds allows us to hit the Bloodwing cutscene from out of bounds. You know, just in the normal way. And we have to wait for Bloodwing to animate, and we have to wait for speakers to speak, talk the talk, you know, story, shenanigans. But we could just do another grenade jump to get back in bounds. Like that. And then conveniently, uh, there's invisible walls that's the entire area. They stop here, and they stop there. So we could just walk back in. You know, just normal stuff. Yeah, a tiny little entrance to get back in bounds. Right, we're just waiting. Uh, one thing I'm going to do for this boss fight is continuously jump uh, whenever I'm attacking Bloodwing. Uh, if you're in the air in this game, enemies can't uh, correctly track you. Uh, so the more, the longer I'm in the air, the longer I can stun lock Bloodwing and just kind of shoot him in the face. Like that. That fight went really well. Sometimes Bloodwing can fly away and it's really annoying. Didn't happen here, thankfully. Now Decept's going to uh, do a grenade jump. Play a quest here. Skip some dialogue. And then use this elevator here to crush himself. And that'll death warp him back to the start of the map. We can leave much quicker. I forgot to equip my new shotgun. Because I'm already level 14. Yeah, that never happens. <laughs> well, another stack of bucket before we leave. Uh, that's going to be a theme. Every time we leave a map, most likely going to go for a bucket stack if I have Death Trap. More waiting on Claptrap. I, it seems as if every single time Claptrap's part of the story, we have to wait. Shocking. <laughs> Still working on that mission. That yeah, the speedrunners, we really do not like Claptrap. I mean, even before I was a speedrunner, I didn't like Claptrap, but he's yeah. the worst robot. 
I didn't like him, and then I spent enough time with him that it uh, Stockholm syndrome me into liking the love trap. Not the Stockholm syndrome. Uh, oh no. So now we're gonna go meet another one of the playable characters from Borderlands One. I could have been risky if you didn't put your shield on. I was getting my shield on. Come on, I wouldn't forget something as simple as that. That's where the vault keys being held. So yeah, this area is just a whole bunch of bandits, and um, got to run to the end of the map to go meet the character we're here to meet. So, I, how do you have so much time to menu there? Every time I do that menuing where I buy ammo or whatever, I instantly I got get insanely lucky. Destroyed no, that, was by just, the that was actually just luck. we are just taking your time. I think I got going. like a mini psycho, so anyway. Yeah, you were just going for like a leisurely stroll there, and I'm like stressed out of my mind every time in this Apparently section. I'm always stressed out there, like, oh god, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Fine, it worked out. Yeah, this map is just a beeline to the end of the map, and then we have a, a way fight here. Thankfully, there's a ceiling. The ceiling helps <laughs> a lot. Yeah, you just shoot the ceiling, and most of them just, you know, go away. There are certain enemies that I'm focusing more than others. Uh, most importantly, the badass marauders that go up. That's the last one. That was really quick. Shocking. I have a new shotgun. Oh, I have level bonus. Okay, now this fight's over already. Yeah, this is... Yeah, quick. okay. Okay. Yeah, that's the way fight. I'm just gonna play a quest here. I skipped a bit of dialogue. And now he's 15, which means he has access to that amp shield which you bought back in the fridge. Uh, so the whole idea behind amp shields is that their like, gimmick is that when the shield is at full capacity, you can use a bit of that capacity to gain a damage boost. This is amp damage. And when we have this buck up glitch applied where our shield is constantly recharging, we can stack buck up over and over to get this shot or get this bonus damage more and more times. And if you stack enough buck up, you can actually get it on every shot, even when you're firing at the speed. Um, so buck up is actually a really important glitch, not only because it gives us a whole bunch of survivability for late game, but it also gives us a lot more damage with amp shields. Yeah, every, every character probably as bad as it gets. Every character can do the infinite ammo glitch, sort of. Krieg isn't; it's kind of an exception, but whatever. Um, but Gage really makes the most use out of it, just because of buck up. And another quirk about amp shields on this patch specifically is that when you have a multi pellet shock or multi pellet gun like a shotgun, which has this one has thirteen pellets. Um, the amp damage will actually apply to every pellet of the gun rather than just applying once to the gun itself. Uh, this is fixed on later patches, but on 1.1 it's not, so we have complete access to it and it massively magnifies your damage. The best way to think about it is uh, you take the amp shield and multiply by your bullets instead of taking the amp shield and dividing by your number of bullets. What is your amp? I didn't see it when you got it. Bad. It's not it's good. Bad. It's like it's 68 bad. by 50 or something. 68 recharge, 58 damage. Yeah, that's what I like to I've call had worse. Uh, bad. BAD. I've had like a 32. If you get a 32, that's not worth even buying. At I, that would, point. I would rather <laughs> farm for another one. I yeah. realistically should have done that this time as well. But <laughs> whatever. That's okay. I'll definitely get an upgrade here, and I won't be scrambling at the end of the game because I have no amp damage. Yeah. You're going to get a 200 here. It's going to be chill. Right, it's gonna be level 19 though, so I'm gonna cry in Sawtooth. No, you'll get one before opportunity at Hyperion Bridge. Right. It'll be 17. Right. right, no, I forgot about that part. Yeah. Yeah, this area is just, there's these three Whoa. beacons that are uh, guiding the mortars that are bombarding this area, and you just gotta destroy those beacons and fight off the, the robots.
And that's Thousand Cuts. At least for now. We will be coming back here at one other point in the room. Back sanctuary, grabbing more quests, you know, the normal. Not really much different. Sorry to interrupt, but we've little time. And we're off to get a voice modulator in order to get into the bunker. That means right, I don't think this shield has no it hasn't changed yet. I have five minutes. I'm going there before thousand cuts. That's for sure happening. Four thousand cuts in one cycle. You're right. Dang, you don't need an amp. It's fine. No, I don't need an amp. I'm not. Should I even check this vendor? Because it's gonna have a good amp in it, and it's gonna be twenty-one. Yeah, you, you gotta check. Yeah. Okay. Told you. Oh, it's twenty. See, I told you. I mean, it's not, I can't even afford. Can't it. afford it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sick, dude. Thanks, game. I appreciate it. No, that's really cool. If you get that, you can once like a warrior. Right. Right. I don't have enough money when you leave. I will not be bought. I will not be spending all of my money on a shield I like won't be able to use. Grab the items from the chest, and then you'll be able to. It'll be fine. What do you mean? You're high on XP this run too. You'll get twenty. Did you know? So this map, uh, we just had to take out one of Hanson Jack's body doubles and grab uh, his pocket watch, which we're going to turn into a voice modulator, so we can say a password in his voice for the upcoming uh, mission here. So now we just got to run around and interact on these info kiosks, and that's the uh, pretty much what we got to do in this map. This is one of the quicker maps in the game. In co-op, you can actually get this whole area down to like a minute or so, just over a minute. And it's like really funny because you can have like the dialogue overlapping and it's like unbelievably quick. However, I'm only one person. Yeah. If only. Can't be in two places at once. So for the rest of this map, we're actually going to make sure we use uh, Lilith's quests because once we turn in the next mission, the next story mission, uh, we'll be locked out of using those for dialogue skips. So getting those out of the way now instead of using something else and then not being able to use that later. Two grenades. And every other character, except for Gage, would just save quit after grabbing the uh, voice modulator there. But we don't want to lose our buck up stacks, so we're going to run all the way back. Kind of funny how much faster Gage is compared to other characters, simply because there's so much more she has to do and more cutscenes she has to watch, even. Yeah. Gage has to watch like an extra minute and a half of cutscenes. You have to like run back in a bunch of places. I don't have back space. I don't have backpack space. Take three? Okay, cool. Uh... She has to do a lot more in certain areas, but she's still like multiple minutes faster than the next character. Just because of how much damage output she has, survivability. Yeah, every skill that we spec into is like quite advantageous for the run. And it's really funny because some characters have pretty much no skills that help in any way. And their skills that might even be actively detrimental in some cases. Gage is really just the perfect storm for the speeder. That is not the vendor I want to put. So, uh, to no. start, that's... Mm, yeah, oh, that's pretty good, yeah. yeah. It's okay. My max is going to be hurting. Okay, I'm going to stop nerding. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so to start this mission, there's just a long piece of dialogue. So we're just going to travel away. Um, that, that'll give us an opportunity to check for better snipers if we want to look for them, and then buy grenades as well. Then we're going to travel back. Let us get the dialogue. And we can progress like normal. Also allows us to stock back up on grenades, which we'll need for first of all movement, second of all a skip coming up. Jack was coming after me. It's time to take the fight to him. 
crap in his trigger finger. So now that we've traveled to wildlife uh, for a claptrap upgrade, um, thousand cuts for brick, just just for brick, and then opportunity for a voice modulator, we finally can attack the bunker. Um, finally, because the claptrap upgrade allows claptrap to go through the deterrence field and disable it for us. Thankfully, we did all of that work to get something for him to disable the deterrence field. Yeah, we need him to take down the, the, the door for us, man. Can't get around it otherwise. Uh oh. Yeah. That's awkward. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty awkward. <laughs> yeah, there's this, this whole... It, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, this is actually vaguely dangerous if you try this uh, casually, not knowing what you're doing. Um, if you hit a trigger too far up this ramp, you can soft lock Claptrap if he hasn't actually gone through the deterrence field yet. Yep. Yeah, that's I definitely, definitely took it slow because uh, I did that during my D-Rust <laughs> <laughs> and had to slowly walk all the way back to the fast travel because, again, we can't save quit. So, like, yeah. our only option to fix that is... Run all the way back, travel out, travel back. Yeah, it was the walk of shame. Yep. Yeah, it, it's and fine. You can't. We got it. I suppose you could, like, death crawl into the deterrence field, but. There's that's a still bad. safe station right next there's to a, the. Yeah, there's a safe station right there. So. You need to spawn right back where you are. Oh, hi. Thanks oh. for taking my close enough stack. <laughs> I appreciate that. Eat yeah, so all of my bullets. Normally enemies aren't supposed to walk through the door because um, the door is closed, but sometimes yeah, enemies do. just do that for some reason. It's kind of funny. I don't think I get a bucket stack here. I kind of fat fingered my action skill button. Oh, well, not a huge deal. Well, okay, it kind of is, but I'm just going to pretend like it's not a big one and move on. What? Which shield beeping? I don't hear any of it. What? Sorry? What shield beeping? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I did. I I literally could not hear that question over the shield beeping. <laughs> no, no. What what shield beeping? I, I'm, I, I'm not oh, sure. Yeah, no. There's no shield beeping going on. <laughs> this is just what normal gameplay sounds like. Yeah, it automatically after you run this game for long enough, you just kind of tune it out. Like, <laughs> I'm waiting. Cool. We've made right. it to the bunker. Uh, definitely don't like this map. Uh, most of it is RNG spawns. Uh, you have to kill 12 auto cannons. 11 out of the 12. Uh, well, I guess the way I'm, okay, I'm going to start over. Um, there's 12 auto cannons. Uh, you kill the first one, and then 11 spawn afterwards in 11 distinct locations. But the spawn pattern is always different. So you can either get screwed very harshly over and over again, or you can get lucky and actually have them stay clustered. Great start. Okay, that's this, actually not bad. This map is entirely RNG. Uh, there's like not really much you can do to speed it up other than just doing your best to clear these turrets as quickly as possible. One of the back, one of the... Dang. It's okay, it's okay. After this one dies eventually, I'll get the one at the back. Oh, uh, oh okay. wow, you did. <laughs> Wow. Okay. That's really nice. Is yeah. this one here too? It's going to be this one next. It's it's just guaranteed, actually. You didn't hear me. I didn't say anything. <laughs> I did not say a single thing about guaranteed. Getting the one at the back like pretty early is was really good, though. Like The rest of these can be mediocre, and they'd still be fine. Yeah, this can go really poorly if they, like, alternate what side they spawn on. 
And then after this, there's going to be a boss fight. And there's quite a bit of RNG involved in that boss fight, too. This this is realistically just RNG 3? Yeah, it's... <laughs> it's usually not the worst. If you have a, um, a good enough shotgun, you can usually mitigate the turret RNG a little bit, just because you have, you know, you can kill them from farther away. So it's not too much a deal where they spawn. But otherwise, you're kind of just doing as best as you can, hoping you get good luck. Uh, you really think I'd protect Angel with nothing but a couple of bots and some flimsy turrets? <laughs> I guess we'll see what happens. So pretty much we're hoping for Bunker to fly around to us instead of perching on the other side of the map. Which is exactly what's not going to happen. Yeah, Thanks, Bunker. Pattern. I really appreciate it. I can't now. I was up standing in the spot down here to try and manipulate Bunker into a better spot. This is the worst possible pattern you can get aside from him just flying around for an additional 20 seconds randomly. I didn't even get still, still cycle. Uh, this will be fun. Yeah, no, this is very bad. I have damage. Okay, I actually so kind of do have damage. There's a phase you can go into where he's just standing still, and it's really easy to do a lot of damage. He's also a bit closer than he is right here, but unfortunately we didn't get that pattern this time. I would not be surprised if this one turns into a two cycle. Oh, I got lucky. All right. Not the fastest fight of all time, but at least we didn't have to wait for Bunker to perch again. Yeah, that, was, take it. that was pretty good considering. Oh, 18. It's not even that good. I'm going to be honest. I mean, it's better uh, than what I have, so... It, yeah, I'll probably it's not use that good. it. But it might be better for one year. 18 is kind of... Well, okay, if I'm using this amp, I, it, the pellet count literally doesn't matter. Like, it's just... Well, I just mean, like, the base damage. Oh, yeah. Like, long riders are really good for warrior. They're high enough level. <laughs> so we're not going to check any of the loot bunker drops, because we won't be high enough level to use it. We're going to run immediately to the underground here. Do a, a skip. And then hit the button, but instead of writing the elevator down, we're going to do a little out of bounds because it's much, much faster than you all the way down. Statistically, every speedrunner has dropped a 94% sham and never seen it. It's true. Nice. Um, Smooth. All right, that's bunker done. That's like the last huge section of RNG in the run. Yep, and now we're on to an even better part of the run. Heck yeah. Control Core Angel! Yippee! The key is here. So this is a cutscene that only Gage watches, because every other character would just hit the button and then save quit to skip this. You cannot just steal the vault key. Well, Obviously you can't save quit, so... We get to listen to Angel, I guess. Me. She's actually not in the room with us. Don't worry about that. She'll show up out of nowhere. Just up here. And typically, Angel's supposed to be in this room uh, with you, but if you stand right where she spawns in uh, before the cutscene, then you will just despawn her. You actually do it with like any character if they have a if they're spawned in a particular spot. Yep. Which makes it particularly bad for the end of this room. Yeah, sometimes you can uh, stand where a character's supposed to spawn in, and then he, he won't spawn in, and he'll just be standing out of bounds. Which would be very bad, because it's kind of hard to get there. I mean, you can get there, it's just... It's yeah, it's a hard. hard. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is an area that is uh, as close as this game gets to an auto-scroller, the way we usually like to describe it. Because you can't really speed anything up, you're just kind of kind of dependent upon the spawn animation of uh, the enemies here. We have a few dialogue skips we'll do throughout the run, but other than that, it's pretty much just kill the enemies as quickly as possible. Ammo, 
Did my yeah, accuracy it, get notably noticeably worse after that merge, or am I just going crazy? Um, probably it's actually both. better. I, I mention it every time I'm commentating this run, and I get to control Angel, but I still do have a bounty out for skipping this. Every uh, every inhibitor you manage to skip gets you money, and if you skip all three, we love you a lot. Bounty is absolutely still valid. I will pay it out if someone figures it out. But at this point, if you figure out Control Core Angel Skip, you have found something that somehow the entire community has overlooked for like seven years. Yeah, we've been trying to skip this area for forever, and everything that people have looked into just seems to return basically nothing. But we would love to skip this area, but uh, I don't believe that it'll... Will happen. The main problem with this map is the enemy spawn too slow. Yeah. Like if like this area would be fine if it wasn't like combat for 30 seconds and then you sit and wait for another 15 on random dialogue that really doesn't matter. I don't know. That's kind of my opinion on this map. Where is he? Oh. So one minor so, thing that we can also do is that whenever Roland's on the ground, instead of up top, uh, removing the protectors around the iridium injectors, is that he'll actually follow the host player. So in co-op, it's really easy to have just the host escort Roland to where he needs to be. In solo, it's kind of awkward to do because you want to be close to the enemies to damage them, but you also want to lead Roland to where he needs to be. But it is just a tiny little optimization we can do to save a few seconds. And then sometimes you get a, the final enemy will spawn on the exact opposite of the room, and then it's really hard to lead him to where he needs to be. Yeah. I did a really bad job of doing that. I kind of forgot that I was supposed to do that until the very end. <laughs> Thank you, Ion Loader. So after these two enemies, I'm going to stand in a specific spot to uh, despawn Lilith, just like I did uh, with Angel. Uh, this one really doesn't save time, but it's funny. Here she is. <laughs> Oh, is she on vacation? Thanks, Lola. That was really good escorting there. He was like perfect in the spot. So this is uh, one fun part of the run, or the section at least, is that uh, Lilith can take a basically random amount of time to teleport Roland up to the top there. So it's always a fun time to just, you know, sit and wait to see how much time Lilith decides she's gonna lose you. Right here, we're gonna do one dialogue skip at the end of the map for the last injector. And we're more or less done. We just gotta wait for a few animations, and that's about it for this map. Thankfully. So yeah, if you stand right where Roland spawns in here at the end of the map, you will despawn him, and he'll get pushed out of bounds to where Lilith was uh, earlier. Which is very bad because you need to turn into the quest to Roland. Now we get to watch another cutscene that only Gabe gets to watch. I love cutscenes. This is, I think, the only category in all of Borderlands that watches a cutscene besides, like, yep. solo all quests. No, solo all quests save quits, so. Oh, yeah. You don't keep just, up for. This is the only quest. category where he watches this cutscene? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Literally and the yet, only one. And yet, somehow, it's still faster. <laughs> yeah, no, it's crazy. And buck up is very, very good, as you can see from the fact that we watch cutscenes and still end up faster. Buck up anarchy close enough, just everything that we're specking into is what makes this character good. Lilith, 
kill the vault hunter. We've got a date to keep with the warrior. Rip Ronald. No! Rip Ronald. Ronald. Doing that movement blind is actually kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> like that's it's a skill to do that. Yeah, if really you swap away and back, you can uh, get rid of like the Jack, hand up animation that's blocking your face, store. and it makes it a little easier. Most precious treasure could be in the hands of some. Okay? But the okay. one funny quirk of this is um, typically Marcus has a cutscene to introduce him when you first beat him. Um, but after hey, Control Core hey. Angel, we get teleported behind that cutscene trigger. And the way the game checks to see if you've watched that cutscene or not is to see if you have Marcus's first mission. So you can even do this casually, is where if you don't pick up his mission, you'll actually end up watching the cutscene again if you go talk to him. So if you pick up the first mission before you watch the cutscene, you can end up not watching it, even though you're running through his area. That's unfortunate. You can check wildlife. Right here, just up, just checking for a better amp because the one he has is very bad. Is there any 18s? What is that? You're kidding. It's, it's you so are bad. kidding. I mean, I'm gonna buy it because it's better. Dude, 900 capacity. Yeah, okay. Dude, what a joke. <laughs> Double Dude, tango in total. I, is, you are kidding. Okay. It's just marginally better, though, so we'll take it. Hey, the only reason I'm grabbing it is for the shield capacity. <laughs> That's literally it. Okay. I'm not upset whatsoever. I just, nope. <laughs> at least you get that good 19 one, so you only have one yeah, area. No, at least I have the good 19 one. I'm using the scatter gun or the long rider. Jolts has been grading your amps in chat all run. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a Jolts thing to do. It is worse grade than the previous one. Wow. That's I think the one actually, that is literally impeccable. I mean, given the fact that they were the same damage and different levels, that does make sense. That's... <laughs> oh, uh. oh, no. Well, you got a good 19 one. It has, you know, Hyperion parts, so that helps. Yeah, yeah, a good 19 amp, dude. I can't wait to use that. For pump Station 2 would be here. good. Oh, true, I have it for Pump Station 2. Oh, you're right. It might have less capacity, though, so... No, it definitely will. A double pangolin on your 18 one? Yeah, I don't think you could beat the capacity. You, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I appreciate that. Like, long-term longevity and skill in this game isn't really measured by like how skilled you are at the speedrun, but rather how many parts you can memorize off of everything. <laughs> exactly. A neat little car right here, Easy. just to take a more direct line to the next area. I definitely was not very worried about that at all. You go for that no. jump, and yet you don't go for Frostburn jump. No, because this one actually saves time. on the one saves like, one. And you can't, like, throw your run by missing that one. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I, can't believe I'm, I, have an, I can't believe an amp shield with 900 capacity. Actually, that's quite a lot. I've never seen that before. <laughs> okay, sorry to cut you off. Uh, so this is Sawtooth Cauldron, which is quite a difficult map. There's a whole bunch of enemies in a very, very small area. And we're supposed to be like level 25 or so when coming through this area. We're level 18. Uh, so even with Buck Up recharging your shield a lot, we are you can still get one shot directly through your shield by certain enemies. Um, especially when you have like six of them shooting at you, the damage really stacks up. So it's always a real narrow biter getting through this section. But a 900 capacity shield should make this a bit easier than normal. I am so happy that's a caustic Goliath and not a normal one. <laughs> yeah, that would have been bad. <laughs> I am so happy. If we're doing a neat little grenade jump, uh, normally you have to go in a much more roundabout way and hit a, a trigger that's very far away. Uh, but here we're gonna do a strat that Deceptic's actually found, where if you just jump and hit the trigger right there, that's just in the air for some reason. It's like uh, we have a tool to like visualize the triggers, and there's just like a sphere that's like a few feet off the ground sitting there. That is the trigger, and that's not the one you're supposed to hit. There's supposed to be another one about another 10 second run away, but this one also exists, and we have no idea why. 
And just like most things in uh, the Borderlands series, it was found by being suboptimal. Yeah. I was taking a, a bad path on like some random any percent run and noticed that the check mark happened way earlier than it was supposed to. Uh, so yeah. About a 10 second I love time the save. one pixel big trigger in the sky. Uh, you remembering to play the game? Well, that's most of the hard part over. The only reason that didn't go horribly was because I have a 900 capacity shield. That uh, definitely helped. Why did I do this? This is not co-op. Do not use your co-op brain. Okay. Yeah. That's one thing that happens to me hurts. too. Is that uh, running multiple categories always messes me up. So up here, uh, we need to clear out a couple enemies, and then we're going to get five buzzard spawns. There are three locations that the buzzards can spawn from. Uh, one of them is really bad, really far away, that one over there. So uh, obviously, I'm going to get three out of four, three out of five over there. That's kind of guaranteed. Or not. Wait, there's still a chance I get three out of there. Wait a minute. Okay, I actually got pretty lucky here. Never mind. I oh, no, you didn't. I literally <laughs> take all of that back. I did not say a single word. Uh, so I guess we're back on theme with the random badasses of spawn. Oh, we're going to be here for so long. Wait, hold on. Idea. The long rider. <laughs> Stress. Okay. This guy fly back around. That wasn't too bad. Only because I had the log writer. Otherwise, that would have been awful. Oh, um, okay. That's a really. I was uh, paying attention. <laughs> I was looking at the way I should have been looking. And uh, we just have to wait for the buzzers to come and pick up those crates from back to the fast travel. Just that can fuck up. That was a pretty clean salty, all things considered. Yeah, except for the badass that spawned, but yeah. you know, if you don't forget, if you don't think about that one thing that went wrong, it went really good. So last night I got a little. Why don't you speak for the menu right there? Uh, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I do not want to hear a single word out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah, you can use the space bar to do a lot of the menuing instead of hitting enter, but uh, you mess it up, you jump, and then you have to wait to land again to interact with the catcher ride, so we just make fun of Deceptics because he's like the only one in space bar menu in the game. Okay, whatever. Uh, Justin and I for sure go back and forth on that a lot. Space bar save quitting is literally better. It isn't, though. Where Wait, why do you space bar save quit? That's what I'm saying. It's, it's better. It's easier. Escape and space of space. Is that a lot to... I do not want... Oh my goodness. Why do you use two hands to do your save quit? Uh, I don't know, actually. That's just the way I learned. Uh, and when I learned that you could use space bar instead of enter, oh, that was the greatest day ever. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm with Amy on this one. I'm sorry, do you want to go over all of the other binds that I have? We can we can go down this rabbit hole. Yeah, we'll be I, here forever. Just, I mean, we can go over my really binds. I have. We can go over my binds if we want oh, to talk that about it. <laughs> Don't you have menus on one through five? Yeah, oh, like a normal God. person. <laughs> like a normal person. Okay, <laughs> we're, we're done talking, that's it. <laughs> I... Yeah, the shield has like half the capacity of that other one does 500. Yeah, but the recharge rate is double, so yeah. I think it's worth it. Also, it has oh, way more damage, so. Yeah. Where is my. Okay. <laughs> I, I did awkward. not want the kill skill. That's fine. And yeah, normally we destroy our car there because it uh, fucks the skill we have that don't give us a bit of movement speed. But uh, it bounced really weirdly, so. No speed for you. Nope. Don't need it anyway. 
And this is a really sketchy area to run. You can die here very Jump! easily. Oh my goodness. Oh okay. wow, that was close. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. So the strat there is to get downed right after you complete the objective and then crawl into the death plane. Because this will preserve our anarchy stacks. If you hit a death plane while in fight for your life, it won't get rid of them. So that was the idea there. That went really well, because sometimes you can get down like way too early and you have to get a loader to get back up and it's just real really close sometimes but that one yeah, i got really lucky there as well because the ion loader had a shield up which meant i wouldn't really be able to get a second wind so uh pretty lucky i'm just gonna oh never mind this guy has a hyperion shotgun oh. i was getting oh. a little bit it's fine. Oh, hey, it's fine. Everything is going as planned. Yeah, your car's not on fire. I, cars are meant to be on fire. Cars everything are doing good, right? <laughs> exactly. Flames it's <laughs> from speed, you know? Exactly. I'm going too fast. You can get to the stockade through the pipe. We're going to hit the pipe. Normally, you have to walk all the way through the pipe on foot. But, You're kidding. Um, that didn't work. That's unfortunate. Oh, now my car's in the way. <laughs> okay. I don't have a grenade. I don't have a grenade. Uh, okay, no, it's fine. There's an ammo crate over here. <laughs> So normally you have to run all the way through the pipe, but uh, you can do this little card strat here that should have worked. I don't know why it didn't decide to it, work this it put time. Me out the, uh, the back seat. Okay, I'm just bad at video games, apparently. Um, it put me out of the back seat instead of the front seat, like you would expect it to, given I was sitting in the front seat. This is, this is normal. So, this is optimal. Yeah, no, this is definitely optimal. I had to check two ammo crates that I think I've opened maybe twice in my life. <laughs> It's fine. Optimal. Exactly. Optimal. <laughs> the chat said no back seating. Mining <laughs> <laughs> information. Oh, I should probably do this. All floors to the stockade. Get inside. Did I miss this again? This I... one is actually kind of hard to do because the, the gate is like a little bit taller than it actually looks. But it's kind of hard to do that one while you're on the run. Yeah, no, I didn't want that grenade to boost me anyway. Yeah, it's too quick with your possible force. No, I was too quick. So right here uh, is a mini boss, Saturn, who has no crit spots. So first of all, we're super low level, taking it down is hard. No crit spots means we do less damage. Uh, but if I place Death Trap in a certain spot, they'll aggro on Death Trap and just hopefully leave me alone. Hopefully. Yeah, usually Saturn isn't too bad if you summon Death Trap at the right time. Yeah, but it is very easy to summon Death Trap at not the right time. We're going to be skipping past all these enemies. And going for a little grenade jump right here up the stairs instead of taking a staircase. And if you end up getting this first try, it actually uh, sets up a dialogue skip. You want to hit this console while Jack is still talking. And then he'll get interrupted by Mordecai. And then Mordecai will get interrupted again. I should have shot this barrel. Oh! Yeah, you just fine. Me. No, we're fine. It's fine. Oh, you're I got lucky. Range. Do not worry about it. That guy's a sniper. That guy has a sniper. He has a sniper. It's fine. Just like everything else in this run, right. it's fine. Everyone knows snipers are only dangerous in Heroes Pass. True. They do nothing else the entire game. Home Station Sorry. 2 does not exist. Can't have <laughs> it. <laughs> Alright, so we're on to the last mission in the game. Uh, hey, and like most things, we need Claptrap's help. Uh, there's a big door that we that we uh, can't can't get past, and uh, we need Claptrap to uh, open open the door for us. And so we gotta, we gotta, gotta, yeah, it's literally like ten feet tall. I mean, how are you gonna get around that? Anyway, we have to we have to bring Claptrap along. One last buck up stack in. You think you have a uh, one per shot? Probably. What's but my recharge rate is 
or yeah, my recharge rate's 120. Oh, oh so yeah, you're definitely fine. And I don't have a punk. So. You got a long rider though. True. <laughs> Although I probably might use. I don't know what I'm gonna use for warrior. Why is my car getting in weird, weird places? That yeah, it really went really far there. <laughs> Whatever. My car does not want to help me out. I still got a grenade from that chest. Cool. All right, more waiting on Claptrap. He has to talk and move. Yeah, this run starts or it ends the way it starts. Waiting for Claptrap. Waiting for Claptrap. Almost poetic, really. So true. In, uh, again, another thing about other categories is that they, they would act just save quit after talking to Claptrap and drive back here because it is quicker than just waiting for him to walk. But again, we don't want to save quick, save quit, so, uh, you just have to wait for him. I hope you guys like the shield regen noise because we're about to hear it a lot more than we just did for the past, like, hour. <laughs> or, like, I guess, not even an hour. Yeah, that's, yep. What shield recharge is? Exactly. I the shield? I mean, there's, there, there's a shotgun. I can definitely hear the shotgun. And that's the only sound being played. <laughs> I really wish skipping this dialogue saved time. It Me too. I wish there was anything we could do to speed this up. <laughs> yeah, literally anything. <laughs> If you save quit during this fight, it resets it to the beginning. So it's not even like you could do part of the fight, save quit, drive back. Because realistically, that might be faster in some situations. Mm -hmm. uh, it would it resets the fight, though. Yeah, if we had um, if we had any method to, like... Or if we had the ability to do the sequence break in this game, or sequence skip, it'd be really nice. But um, the Borderlands games are, like, the main stories. Typically very well coded, so you have to do everything in order, and you can't skip any objectives or anything like that, typically, so... We would be able to go a lot faster in a lot of sections if we could just, you know, go to the end of the map without having to do the rest of it. But, alas, we don't have a that ability. I didn't stop. Okay. That's fine. Uh, there's another one. Wait. We're good. Saved. Yeah, your amp is really good, so those are bears aren't too bad. Oh, there, there's, a, there's a shield? I have a shield on? I couldn't hear it. <laughs> that was too much damage. Okay. I, uh, I messed up a little bit. It's fine. Thank you. <laughs> that was okay. really nice. Um, <laughs> what did he? Oh wait, there's another spare. Oh, is he stuck out of bounds or no? Okay, that could have been bad. But he got stuck. It's a badass though. Or no, it's not. I thought it looked like one. Sometimes the enemies can uh, fly in a weird way and actually fly underneath the map. Uh, it's very rare that it happens. Depleted. Don't worry, baby. All right, it's time for Claptrap to do his job. Open the big door. Really glad we got Claptrap here so we can open this door for us. Yeah. Don't don't look at what I'm doing. I'm not I just this is normal. Claptrap has to open the door for us. Okay? Just don't even don't even worry. Claptrap has to open the door. Oh. Yeah, so there's two doors basically that we have a whole like huge fiasco surrounding it. Because we need Claptrap to open the door for us. And we can just get around the door regardless of Claptrap, so. Such a help this robot is. This also unironically means that the first time you get to Irid Iridium Blight, you can just go to the Vault of the Warrior. Yeah, but so we nothing will happen though. Yeah. If they didn't code, if uh, Gearbox hadn't had the gall to code the main story almost unbreakable, uh, we could finish the game really, like, probably 20 minutes faster. Yeah, something like that. But. 
Unfortunately, they had to do a good job with Cody. I know. They had to, like, actually do a good job. Yeah. The side uh, quests in this game are super breakable, but the main story is, like, actually pretty rock solid. Like, it's, it's one of the most consistent things about Borderlands games. I should add Hero's Pass. Uh... Normally, you're supposed to, like, wait behind doors, and then, like, you have Mordecai and Brick help you open the doors, and then you slowly go through the map doing all the combat. Uh, we could just run straight to the end, because there are absolutely zero triggers that matter for the run. So, uh, as long as I don't get sniped by the snipers behind me, and Death Trap does his job. And yeah, this map is uh, usually a real nail biter. It comes right at the end of the run, of course. But um, there's a bunch of enemies that spawn with RPGs, which will one shot you, and then snipers as well will one shot you at this point from very far away. Sometimes we summon death trap a little bit earlier, uh, pull aggro, and we do this little uh, path here that's out of bounds just to avoid some some more enemies and do a little bit more direct up a line. That last jump onto that last jump final scary. platform, it's so scary. It's like so much tighter than it looks. And it's, oh, it always gives me butterflies when I go for it. Okay, you didn't have to be across the world, but that's fine. That went pretty smooth. These last two enemies usually aren't too much of an issue for Gage. Other characters might have a bit of a difficulty, but Gage can usually handle them pretty quickly. That is Heroes Pass done now. There's only one map in the game left. Vault of the Warrior. You're a plague, bandit. You and your so usually there's uh, an elevator we have to ride down here. It takes about a while, and it's like quite a detour to go do it. So we're gonna take a much more direct line out of bounds here, using some nifty grenade jumps. That is now where you throw the grenade. <laughs> Easy. Whoa, is that new? Yup. Dude, that's actually sick. So I was, I didn't think you were going to make it because you have one grenade left. Um, that skip is normally a lot harder. Or a lot. Yeah, there's, there's a lot more jumps. A lot more yeah. Um, that, that one is pretty difficult, mostly because it's new, but... Yeah, that saves like seven, eight seconds over the old version. That's pretty sick, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I really like uh, that new strategy. Pretty, pretty happy I hit sure. that. Because uh, it is very easy to fall into the lava and lose all your anarchy stacks and then have a very rough time with Jack <laughs> in the order. And then reset Today, one hour and 50 minutes into the run. <laughs> yeah. But before I cleanse this planet for good... Do you think Long Rider is better for this? I'm gonna for Warrior, probably, yeah. Yes. For accuracy? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's for the four we'll guns. Uh, that it? Huh? Yeah, all we got left now is the final boss. No! The key's charged! Given how hard the fight for Jack was, uh, you could probably tell where this is going. It won't be easy, but it definitely won't be hard given the fact that we are 10 levels below the final boss. And the game expects you to be level 30 here, and we're level 19, or actually we're 20 at this point. And whenever enemies are much higher level than you, they have damage resistance, so you deal reduce damage to them. So getting uh, this boss in one cycle is really difficult, and you need good gear to be able to get it. Looks like you got yeah, it. That seems yeah. pretty good. Oh, sick. The long riders are OP. Yeah, bro, I, bro just zero cycle, bro. The accuracy and the uh, <laughs> accurate is definitely much better. You yeah, know, I'll just zero cycle the story kill next time. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll work on that. We'll work on that discovery. <laughs> there we are. That was the final boss. That's the final All that's boss. left is to uh, give Jack a hug and uh, touch the vault key. What's our prize? What is going to be our prize? Great. Okay. 
Built our cottage on the Iridium Blighting. So time is coming up soon. Make sure everything's okay. This isn't time. There we are. Ah, oh, well done, dude. Good run. That was a uh, 20014. So, Slow down, man. Not too bad, actually. Given I did super skip to Okay, I'm, we're not going to details. You get the idea. <laughs> not too bad of a run. Uh, yeah. Um, this run is actually really fun. Uh, there's been a lot of changes since I've actually started running. Uh, and this category looks a lot different than when I first saw it, that's for sure. Um, it's got a mix of everything. Uh, I guess not everything. It's got a mix of a good uh, portion of the glitches in this run. It's pretty fun. There's some difficult sections, some stuff that takes practice to get good at. It's got a skill ceiling, and that's really all that matters. Um, but yeah. Uh, if you're interested in learning anything about this run, or any of the runs for the Borderlands series in general, uh, if you go to the speedrun.com websites for any of the Borderlands games, for this game, that's speedrun.com forward slash BL2, uh, you can join the Discord, and we'll be there's like plenty of resources. We'll be happy to help if you have any questions. Um, but yeah, I don't really have much else to say other than that. So, you have anything, Andres? Uh, no, I think you got anything there. Nice run, dude. Yeah. That was really good. Thanks, dude. And I, I, I'll, I'll give a shout out because I'm, I'm working on it. We're trying to get a, a dedicated website up for Borderlands speedrunning. Um, like a, a wiki. So keep an eye out for that if you want to learn more. Yeah. But well, yeah. Thank, thank you, you all for uh, watching. Uh, thanks for inviting me on, Amy. I appreciate it. Of uh, course. I hope the run was enjoyable. And, uh, Excellent. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Deceptics. Thank you, Unjust. And thank you, Shockwave, from earlier. Um, that's all uh, we have for you for tonight. And uh, yeah. I, I just um, before I go, I want to give uh, one quick, one more quick uh, announcement that if you want to see the Borderlands Two run, uh, if you're getting here late, uh, or if you want to see the uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands run from earlier, go to YouTube.com/slash/GamesDoneQuick. And if you're checking all this out, you want to try to catch some of this live, go to Twitch.tv/slash/GamesDoneQuick. Uh, weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and as I guess a final sign off here, um, this is like I've said, uh, the, the last time you'll be seeing me on Tuesdays. Uh, so after this, I'll be shifting to a Wednesday based show uh, right before speedruns from the crypt. Um, it's going to be great. Uh, a lot of my games overlap with the things that Dices puts on because horror games are just good FPS games usually. And uh, so my next show will be, hang on, I'm looking at a calendar, I'm cheating here, the 19th. Um, that'll be my, <clears throat> that's when I switch to the time. So hope everybody, uh, you know, checks that out and I'll see y'all then. Uh, thank you everyone for watching and thank you to the Borderlands community in general for just being, I think the best speedrunning community I've ever joined. <laughs>